Yes po dok, yes po Rona, nakamute po kayo. Click nyo lang po, Dok. Hindi nyo nasa po. Hello, hello, Mam Rona. Yes, Mam Rona. Yes, Mam. 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 Ma'am, okay na po kayo dito sa Zoom. Ha? Okay na po kayo dito sa Zoom, ma'am. Ah, okay na. Okay, sige. Okay. Naman, <laughs> nakaka-exploring talaga tayo nito. O, saan, saan po, paano ba? Ang ginamit ko na lang yung laptop at saka cellphone. Hello, Ma'am Rona. Narinig ako. Okay na? Okay.
Good morning, everyone. The, capac the capacity to learn is a gift. The ability to learn is a skill. And the willingness to learn is a choice. My favorite quote from Brian Herbert. Ladies and gentlemen, to the students watching inside the Moodle video meeting, in the Zoom conference, and the viewers of our online live stream, teachers, students, good morning and welcome to the online session of Philosophical Foundation of Education by the Doctor of Education, major in Educational Management students under the EDUC 601, subject at the Laguna State Polytechnic University, Santa Cruz, Laguna Campus. Without further delay, let us start our program with an audiovisual presentation of nationalistic songs followed by an ecumenical prayer.
Hello and good morning, everyone. Good morning, ma'am. Rinig po. Yes, and welcome to EDUC 601, Philosophical Foundation of Education. And welcome din po sa ating uh, 29,000 viewers sa YouTube. Good morning din sa aking mga classmates. Hello. And syempre sa aking mga co-teachers na nanonood ngayon from Pila District, um, Pedro Guevara Memorial National High School, Santa Cruz District, and Pakil District. Good morning everyone. Hello po. Pwede niyo pong itype sa ating chat box, sa ating YouTube, ang uh, inyong name, and then school, and also students from LSPU Santa Cruz Campus. Hello po and good morning. Good morning also to Doc Henley and of course uh, to Dean Florida Pamatmat. Hello po. Okay, so to check the presence of the EDUC 601 students and the live stream participants, we are calling Mrs. Leia P. Menjola, teacher 2 of Pakil Senior High School. Go ahead, Ma'am Leia. Thank you, Dr. Rona. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to my classmates. Uh, good morning to my family who is watching now, who are watching now. And good morning to our professor. This is, uh, our professor is the LSPU Extension Chairperson, uh, Doc Henry Martires. Um, to check our attendance for today, let us see if all the uh, all my classmates are here. Uh, part one from Mam Rodalin Santos, Lori V. Rivera, Erlinda Subihano. Are you or are you all there? Hello, po. Hello, yes, po. Good morning. Good morning. Congratulations in advance. Good morning po. Ma'am, kompleto po sila. Yes po. Yes po. Thank you po. Kami po dito sa part 2 po, si Sir Daryl, si Doc Rona, si Doc Mark, nandito din po. Sa part 3 po, si na, uh, Sir Darren po, Peralta. Present po. Present po ang group number three. Good morning po. 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 Good Hello po, okay na po. From part four, si na ma'am Elenina Rojas, ma'am Sara Amicola, tsaka si ma'am Mercy po, pabiko. Nandito po. Good morning po. Yes po. <laughs> morning Good morning po. to everyone. Thank you. Thank you po. And dun sa last group po natin, si na Ma'am Rosemary de Guzman, Ma'am Josephine Salvador Guevara, and Romalyn Custodio Tan. Good morning po, ma'am. Good morning. Po. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning po. Kompleto po. Yeah. Since I'm done checking our attendance again, I would like to ask all our participants to register on our registration link. And please type your name. If you are watching on our YouTube live, please like our streaming right now. Like and if possible, please subscribe. Yeah. 
uh, write your name and your affiliation. Uh, thank you for attending this live stream. And let me give back it to Ma'am Doc Rona. Back to you, Doc Rona. Thank you so much, Doc Leia. Ayan. So, in our live stream, we have uh, Ma'am Venice Macy Alipit from BEE Ed to BLSP Santa Cruz. And uh, hello din po sa aming uh, principal sa Pila Senior High School, Ma'am Primitiva Ocampo. Good morning po, Ma'am. And then, the rest po, inaanyayahan namin na i-type ang kanilang name and then uh, kung saan sila affiliated. Ayan. Thank you po para ma-shout out namin kayo mamaya. Ayan. So, syempre, shout out sa mga uh, classmates ko na very supportive ngayong araw na to. Although first time natin to, nakakakaba, di ba? Pero kayang-kaya natin to. Okay? So, sa aming viewers, wait lang po, na wait lang po kayo. Yan. So, saglit lang naman po ito and gayon pa lang po nagpapasalamat na kami sa time na ibinigay niyo po sa amin. Thank you po and God bless everyone po. Okay. So, um, at this juncture, we will be hearing an inspirational message from the mother of EDOC 601, the intelligent and kind-hearted professor the LSPU Extension Chairperson, Dr. Heli F. Martires. Let us welcome her with a virtual clap. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Hello. Isang magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. First of all, I would like to acknowledge and congratulate everyone for this remarkable classroom and the board transforming lives through live stream lecture series on topics in 601 philosophy foundation of education that we are initiating even under the time of pandemic. I know that you are struggling so much for the, for the time, for the material, creativity and efforts in order to come up with this series of lectures. I would like to give recognition, of course, to the uh, initiator of this, this group, uh, group two, Bishop Mark, Mamleya, Mamrona, Sir Daryl, and others for their innovative way of bringing out the best among each of us, thinking that any challenges and situation will not be obstacle to prove uh, the high emotional intelligence as educator. Congratulations and that uh, EDD 601 for making this activity a meaningful one. Thank you everyone for extending your know-how to the people out there, clients, community, to take part in this meaningful event. This or this gesture may uh, spark someone's interest and provide learning avenue opportunities for those who will participate. I appreciate so much this event and I am proud that these talented people belong to the CTE, College of Teacher Education. Appreciation is also extended, of course, to the CTE Dean, Dr. Heidi Pamatmatma. Thank you very much for your support. And also to our program head, Nagisar, Dr. Rose Katapang. Again, my warmest congratulations to all of you. God bless. Thank you so much, Doc Henry, for your support to us. And okay, so now we will be proceeding with the session proper. But before we start, we would like to note that this live stream is not being monetized by the YouTube channel we are using right now. Our viewers will also receive a certificate of participation upon responding to a Google link that will be posted before this session ends. 
take note that you should type your names correctly for it will appear on your certificates. And to our viewers also, please make sure that you have on your side a good bottle of water. Yeah. So, brasilin is po talaga na uh, panahon natin ngayon. Okay? So, kailangan uh, kasangga natin ang tubig and at the same time, ang ating internet connection. Okay po? So, let's start na po tayo sa ating training proper. Okay. So, our first speaker is a former bishop and now currently serving as first counselor of the state presidency, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. A secretary in PGMNHS Faculty and Employees Association and also GSAR Student Organization EDD President. He is also a teacher broadcaster in Depth Ed TV a teacher at at PGMNH TLE department, and he will discuss to us the philosophical thoughts of great thinker in education. Let us all welcome Mr. Mark Anthony S. Paloma. Okay, while preparing, si Sir Mark, yan. Good day, everyone, especially to our future educators. My name is Mark Anthony Paloma, a teacher from Pedro Guevara Memorial National High School, and it is my privilege to start the discussion and hope that you'll find it helpful as you prepare to take your examination. I may not be able to discuss all the details or to cover all things regarding this topic, but I hope to provide you an ample information. Listen closely and pay attention. Will you do that? Great! Our very first philosopher is Plato. Plato was born around 427 to 428 BC in Athens, Greece. He is an ancient Greek philosopher, a student of Socrates, and a teacher of Aristotle, and founder of the Academy, best known as the author of philosophical works of unparalleled influence. And when we say unparalleled influence, from the word unparalleled, it means having no equal match or unique kind of quality. What is Plato best known for? Plato is considered by many to be the most important philosopher who ever lived. He is known as the father of idealism in philosophy. Plato is perhaps best known to college students for his parable of a cave or the allegory of the cave, which appears in Plato's Republic. What is idealism according to Plato? Platonic idealism is the theory that the substantive reality around us is only a reflection of a higher truth. The truth, Plato argued, is the abstraction. He believed that uh, the ideas were more real than things. Imagine that. He developed a vision of two worlds, a world of unchanging ideas and a world of changing physical objects. To understand it simply, when we say idealism, Idealism is when we when you envision or see things in an ideal or perfect manner. Unlike realism, on the other hand, which deals with the fact that the reality has an absolute existence independent from our thoughts, ideas, and consciousness. What is Plato's theory of reality? Platonic realism is the theory of reality developed by Plato and explained in, the, in his theory of forms. Platonic realism states that the visible world of particular things is a shifting exhibition, like shadows cast on the wall by the activities of their corresponding universal ideas or forms. Going back to the allegory of the cave, 
the prisoner is only seeing the forms casted on the wall by the puppeters but they don't actually but they're not actually sure uh, what things it is unless they turn their their heads on on what surrounds them now the next question is what are plato's four levels of reality indeed in these passages plato distinguishes four different cognitive states the types of knowing associated with each of the levels or the divided line and presumably with all the with all the forms like imagination ekisha belief pistis intellect the anoia and reason which is the noises our next philosopher is aristotle in Greek, he is called Aristoteles. He was born around 384 BC in Stagira, Chalcidis in Greece, and died in 322 Chalcis in Eboia. Uh, he is an ancient Greek philosopher and scientist, one of the greatest intellectual figures of Western history. He was the author of a philosophical and scientific system that became the framework of vehicle for both Christian scholasticism and medieval Islamic philosophy. Even after the intellectual revolutions of the Renaissance, the Reformation and the Enlightenment Aristotelian concepts remain embedded in Western thinking. What is Aristotle best known for? Aristotle was one of the greatest philosophers Whoever lived and the first genuine scientist in history. He made pioneering contributions to all fields of philosophy and science. He invented the field of formal logic and he identified the various scientific disciplines and explored their relationships to each other. What did Aristotle believe in? Well, Aristotle's philosophy stresses biology instead of mathematics like Plato. He believed that the world was made of uh, individuals or substances occurring in fixed natural kinds of species. Each individual is or has a pattern of developments or has a built-in patterns of development which help it grow toward becoming a fully developed individual of its kind. What then is Aristotle's theory? In his metaphysics, he claims that there must be a separate and unchanging being that is the source of all other beings. In his ethics, he holds that it is only by becoming excellent that one could achieve eudaimonia, a sort of happiness or blessedness that constitutes the best kind of human life. What is Aristotle's view of human nature? According to Aristotle, all human functions contribute to eudaimonia or happiness. Happiness is an exclusive uh, human good. It exists in rational activity of soul conforming to virtue. This rational activity is viewed as the supreme end of action and so as man's perfect and self-sufficient end. To understand it better, when we say rational activity or rational behavior, it refers to a decision-making process that is based on making choices that results in the optimal level of benefit or utility for an individual. For example, if a person chooses a job with a profile of, its, a profile of his liking instead of a high-paying job, then it would be also termed as a rational behavior. Next in line of our philosophers is Socrates. Socrates was born on around 470 BC in Athens and died at around 399 BC in the same country, Athens, uh, in Greece. Uh, he is an ancient Greek philosopher whose way of life, character, and thought exerted a profound influence on Western philosophy. What is Socrates best known for? Socrates was a classical Greek philosopher who is credited with laying the fundamentals of modern Western philosophy. He is known for creating Socratic irony and the Socratic method or the elenchus. 
What is Socrates' philosophy in life? Well, Socrates believed that philosophy should achieve practical results for the great, greater well-being well of a society. He attempted to establish an ethical system based on human reason rather than theological doctrine. Socrates pointed out that human characteristic is motivated by the desire for happiness. What was Socrates' teaching method? In the Socratic method, the classroom experience is a shared dialogue between teacher and students in which both are responsible for pushing the dialogue forward through questioning. The Socratic method uses questions to examine the values, principles, and beliefs of students. In teaching or in modern teaching, we value the importance of questions, specifically the HOTS or the what we call higher order thinking skills. This we actually incorporate or do as part of our formative assessment to find out whether the students are learning. And on our end, as teachers or facilitators of learning, we make use of questions and their students' responses and questions in decision making, whether we're going to reinforce or enhance what we have been teaching and so that we can make some modifications. Now, what are the three steps of the Socratic method? The Socratic method is a way of thinking that involves three steps. And what are those three? First, give an initial definition or opinion. So that's how a Socratic method starts. You will give your definition or opinion. Next, the second step in Socratic method is to ask questions. Questions that raises an exception to that definition. At times, we may argue, we may disagree, we are not convinced with what we have heard, with the explanation that we were given. So here comes the third steps in Socratic method, and that is to give a better definition or opinion. It's your chance to uh, explain things clearly, uh, simply, and to the best way that you could in order for those who are listening to agree and believe with what with the point that you are making. Next in our list of great philosopher is Confucius. And he goes by many names, but we are familiar with Confucius. Now he was born in around 551 BC in Kupu, state of Lu, now in Shandong province of China. And he was believed to be China's most famous teacher, philosopher, and political theorist whose ideas have profoundly influenced the civilization and other East Asian countries. What is Confucius best known for? Confucius is known as the first teacher in China who wanted to make education broadly available and who was instrumental in establishing the art of teaching as a vocation. So if we heard the EFA or education for all, that's what Confucius wants to happen. And that he view his teaching as a vocation or something that he is passionate about. He also established ethical, moral, and social standards that formed the basis of a way of life known as Confucianism. What did Confucius believe? Confucius believed that all people and the society they live in benefit from a lifetime of learning and a moral outlook. Confucius was a Chinese philosopher, politician, and teacher whose message of knowledge, benevolence, loyalty, virtue were the main guiding philosophy of China for thousands of years. What are the four main principles of Confucianism? The four cardinal principles and eight virtues are a set of Confucian foundational principles of morality. The four cardinal principles are propriety, which is the quality or state of being proper or suitable. We have righteousness. We have integrity. 
and we understand integrity as the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles or moral uprightness. And of course, the shame. Now, what are the five breaches of Confucianism? Finally, the five constant breaches of Confucianism are Ren, which is what we call benevolence. And when we say benevolence, it is a kind act or kindness. Example is a gift of money to support or to send someone in college. Nowadays, we can also include uh, setting up a community pantry as an act of kindness or benevolence, especially this time of pandemic where people are really struggling to find the uh, means on how they can provide for themselves, most, uh, most especially in finding uh, food for their families or put in their table. And we have the Yi, righteousness. We have Li, again, propriety. We have the Shi, wisdom, which is the application of knowledge. And we have Sin, or trustworthiness. An integration of the literature shows that there are 12 basic breaches in Confucian's thoughts. What is the main philosophy of Confucius? The philosophy of Confucius or Confucianism emphasizes personal and governmental morality, correctness of social relationships, justice, kindness, and sincerity. Confucianism was part of the Chinese social fabric and way of life. To Confucians, everyday life was the arena of religion. So it's just like living what you are believing. That's what we meant by the arena of religion. Here we have the next philosopher. He goes by the name of Lao Che, Lao Chu, or Lao Zi. In Chinese, Lao Zi means Master Lao or the Old Master. Uh, he lived in 6th century in China and he was believed to be the first philosopher of the Chinese Taoism or Taoism and the alleged author of Tao Te Ching or Tao Te Ching, a primary Taoist writing. Modern scholars discount the possibility that Tao Te Ching was written by only one person but readily acknowledge the influence of Taoism or Taoism on the development of Buddhism. Lao Zi is venerated as a philosopher by Confucian and a saint or god in popular religion and was worshipped uh, as an imperial ancestor during the Tang dynasty. What is Lao Chu or Lao Zi known for? Lao Chu or Lao Zi is believed to have been a Chinese philosopher a person who seeks to answer questions about humans and their place in the universe. And the accepted author of the Tao Te Ching, or Tao Te Ching, the main text of Taoist thoughts. He is considered the father of Chinese Taoism, a philosophy that advocates living a simple life. What does Tao or Tao mean? Tao or Tao in Chinese is a Chinese word signifying the way, path, road, road, or sometimes more loosely doctrine, principle, or holistic beliefs. What are the eight pillars of Taoism or Taoism? Scholars attribute the eight bridges to a line in the Sage Emperor Guan's Book of Enlightenment. It is through filial piety, sibling harmony, dedication, trustworthiness, propriety, sacrifice, honor, and sense of shame that we become fully human. Notice that some of these pillars are mentioned in Confucianism. Again, this may be attributed 
to allow to to allow to or allows is being a student of Confucius or being a believer of Confucianism. Now, when we talk about filial piety, which is somehow new to us, it is defined in Encyclopedia Britannica as the attitude of obedience, devotion, and care towards one's parent and elderly family members that is the basis of individual moral conduct and social harmony. And we all believe that it is not simple because um, it is really challenging to do such. Again, filial piety is a highly important and central Confucian virtue in social ethics. Now, what are the three virtues of Taoism or Taoism? So the three jewels of Tao or Tao, we have this Pinyin and Sanbao refer to the three virtues of Taoism or Taoism. First, we have this group of words which are compassion, kindness, and love. Second, we have moderation, simplicity, and frugality. And third, we have humility and modesty. Now we move on to our next philosopher, meet John Amos Comenius. John Amos Comenius was born on March 28, 1592 in Nibnis, Morabia, Habsburg Domain now in Czech Republic. Died on November 14, year 1670 in Amsterdam, Netherlands. He was the, a Czech educational reformer and a religious leader, and remembered mainly for his innovations in methods of teaching, especially languages. He favored the learning of Latin to facilitate the study of European culture. One of his work is entitled The Gate of Tongues Unlocked. It's a revolutionized Latin teaching that is translated into 16 languages. What is John Comenius known for? John Comenius was a Moravian teacher, educator, bishop, and writer in the 17th century. He is considered the father of modern education because he advocated universal education in his book, The Great Didactic. His work included applications for and illustrations of how to teach children. What is education according to Comenius? Comenius introduced a number of educational concepts and innovations, including pictorial textbooks written in native languages instead of Latin, teaching based in gradual development from simple to more comprehensive concepts, lifelong learning with a focus on logical thinking over dull memorization, and equal opportunity will make them learn. Now, in modern day teaching, the use of pictorial textbook is really very important, most especially to the young kids. Uh, um, you can see that they are learning more when there are illustrations with the things that they are reading, the children's book that they have, because most of them, you know, most of them are visual learners. And even it is very helpful in teaching reading. I have read before in an addendum that experts believe that reading is a two-way perceptual process to to make a pupil or to make a student learn how to read this process must be incorporated again two-way perceptual process it includes sounds or the audio and then image or pictures or visuals and another picture in his innovation, in Comine's uh, innovation, was the, the use of native language. Uh, nowadays, we call it uh, the mother tongue, uh, the mother tongue, wherein we, they will understand more the concept if it's explained and discussed using their own native language. What was John Amos Comine's theory? Published in 1649, it was a radical work for its time. 
in an age when people believed that human beings were born naturally evil and that goodness and knowledge had to be beaten into them, Comenius believed that they were born with a natural craving for knowledge and goodness, and that schools beat it out of them. <laughs> what is the ultimate goal of education according to Comenius? Comenius stated in his great didactic that early childhood education was especially crucial with a threefold goal of developing. First, knowledge. Second, virtue. And then, next is piety. Of these three major purposes of education, Comenius placed the, the piety first because he knew that reverence for God was indeed the most important. So among knowledge, virtue, and piety, it is, it is piety which is the most important because it shows uh, that we humble ourselves before our Creator. And uh, the good thing is that th this pattern, knowledge, virtue, and piety are observed in what we do as, as teachers and what we are, what we are uh, aiming in the educational system. What did Comenius believe? Comenius believed that true knowledge could be found in things as they existed in reality when one came to understand how they came about. So the purpose of existence. As a result, Comenius urged all people to recognize the interconnections and harmony among philosophical, theological, scientific, social, and political facts and ideas. Why did Comenius create a new model of schooling? He hoped that through education, mankind might be changed for better. Becomes like the image of God. He advocated the necessity of three kinds of education. Intellectual education. It goes with our mind, our thinking, way of thinking and reasoning. It goes with moral education, our values, and the religious education our beliefs. To teach all the things to all men was the theme of Comenius' theory of education. So for him, Comenius looked at the uh, intellectual education, moral education, and religious education as a holistic package of educating a student or a person. Moving on to our next philosopher, we have John Lacht. John Locke was born on August 29, 1632 in Rington, Somerset in England, and he died on October 28, 1704 in High Lever, Essex. English philosopher whose works lie at the foundation of modern philosophical empiricism and political liberalism, he was an inspirer of both the European Enlightenment and the Constitution of the United States, his philosophical thinking was close to that of the founder of the modern science, especially Robert Boyle, Sir Isaac Newton, and other members of the Royal Society. His political thought was grounded in the notion of a social contract between citizens and in the importance of toleration, especially in matters of religion. Much of what he advocated is uh, the politics was accepted in England after the Glorious Revolution of 1688 to 189 and in the United States uh, in the country's Declaration of Independence in 1776. What is John Locke's theory? In political theory or political philosophy, John Locke reputed the theory of the divine right of kings and argued that all persons are endowed with natural rights to life, liberty, and property. So everyone deserves anything. And that rulers who fail to protect those rights might be removed by the people by force if necessary. Parang walang hari hari. But what were the main beliefs of John Locke? Locke believed that everyone was of a positive nature and believed everyone was essentially fair and unselfish. John also believed people had the right to act the way they want to a certain extent. 
Mr. Locke believed that no one in the government should have absolute power. What are John Locke's three natural rights? Among these fundamental natural rights, Locke said are life, liberty, and property. Locke believed that the most basic human law of nature is the preservation of mankind. Indeed, man is important. To serve the purpose, he reasoned individuals have both a right and a duty to preserve their own lives. It cannot be taken from person. And, 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 and what is John Locke known for saying? In education, these are some of his most famous uh, statement or quotes. First, reading furnishes the mind only with materials of knowledge. It is thinking that makes what we read ours. Another is education begins the gentleman, but reading, good company, and reflection must finish him. And lastly, a sound mind in a sound body is a short but full of a happy state in this world. Indeed, we need a sound mind. Nowadays, sanity is the most important, uh, especially uh, we are faced with a tough situation. Teaching becomes more challenging and competitive in a, in a way. And uh, we can't afford but to lengthen our stride as we move to industrial, uh, port industrial you know, revolution in, in education. Next in line, we have John Jack Russell. John Jack Russell was born on June 28, 1712 in Geneva, Switzerland, and died July 2, 1778 in Ermenonville, France. He is a Swiss-born philosopher, writer, and a political theorist whose treatises and novels inspired the leaders of the French Revolution and the Romantic Generation. What was Jean Jacques Rousseau known for? Jean Jacques Rousseau is famous for reconceiving the social contract as a compact between the individual and a collective general will aimed at the common good and reflected in the laws of an ideal state and for maintaining the existing society rests on a false social contract that perpetuates inequality and rule by. So we understand social contract as an implicit agreement among the members of a society to cooperate for social benefits, for example, by sacrificing some individual freedom for the state protection. What did Jan Jack Russell believe? Jan Jack argued that the general will of the people could not be decided by elected representatives. He believed in a direct democracy in which everyone voted to express the general will and to make the laws of the land. Rousseau had in mind a democracy on a small scale, a city-state like his native Geneva, the country or the place where he came from. What is Rousseau's theory? Rousseau believed modern man's enslavement to his own needs was responsible for all sorts of societal ills, for exploitation and domination of others, to poor self-esteem and depression. Rousseau believed that good government must have the freedom of all it, of its citizens as its most fundamental objective. What was Rousseau's most famous work? The Discourse on the Origin of Inequality remains one of Russell's most famous works and lays the foundation for much of his political thought as it is expressed in the discourse of political economy and social contract. Now, contrary to, to all of this, we as practicing, practicing professional, we as educators believe that education is our social equalizer. And that is what should our student understand when it comes to uh, the status 
of living that they have. Again, education is a social equalizer. Our next philosopher is Johann Henrik Pestalozzi. Johann Henrik Pestalozzi was born on January 12, 1746 in Switzerland. He is a Swiss educational reformer who advocated education of the poor and emphasized teaching methods designed to strengthen the students' own abilities. Pestalozzi's method became widely accepted and most of his principles have been absorbed into modern elementary education. What is Johann Pestalozzi known for? We have mentioned earlier that he is a Swiss educational reformer who advocated education of the poor and emphasized teaching methods designed to strengthen the student's own abilities. Uh, it was a fulfillment of his uh, goal that in 1800, Pestalozzi established an educational institute at Burgdorf, which enabled him to test out his dream of educating poor and privileged children side by side. Who was Pestalozzi and what was his revolutionary slogan? His motto was learning by head, hand, and heart. Thanks to Pestalozzi or Pestalozzi, illiteracy in 18th century in Switzerland was overcome almost completely by 1813. Going back to this motto, learning by head, hand, and heart, I can really tell that it is where we got our, our domains in setting our objectives in teaching, which we have wherein we have cognitive for the head, we have psychomotor for the skills or the hand, and we have uh, values or affective for the heart. What is Pestalozzi method? The Pestalozzi method is a whole child approach that emphasizes the development of all aspects of a person, including the head, heart, and hands. When studying, Pestalozzi believed that this is the most important concept to grasp. What is contribution of Johann Henrik Pestalozzi to education? Uh, Pestalozzi believed in the ability of every individual human being to learn and in the right of every individual to education. So no one should be left behind. It's a child's right to re receive education. He believed that it was the duty of society to put this right into practice. His beliefs led to education becoming democratic in Europe. Education became available or became available for everyone. Our next philosopher is an interesting one. His name was Frederick Probel, and he was born on April 21 in 1782 in Germany, Ernest in Saxony, and died on June 21, 1852 in that same country. He is a German educator who was the founder of Kindergarten and one of the most influential educational reformers, reformers of the 19th century. What is Froebel known for? Frederick Froebel, the German educationalist, is best known as the originator of the kindergarten system. Kindergarten, which literally means a garden for children, comprises a range of early childhood educational practices. Kindergarten methods of teaching uses different instructional designs to help children learn at their own pace while in a social and a collaborative environment. Frederick Probel's enduring significance was through his formulation of the kindergarten system with its emphasis on play and its use of gifts or play materials and occupations or activities. Who was Frederick Probel and his contribution to education? His important contribution to educational theory was his belief in self-activity. What does it mean? Self-activity, Probel meant that the child should not indulge in any activity which is suggested by parents 
or teachers, but he should carry out his own impulses and decision. Walang makikialam. Kumbaga, uh, he will be allowed to explore on his own. That divinity has to be revealed or manifested through spontaneous self-activities of the child. Aside from self-activity, play is an essential factor in child education. So most of our uh, uh, nursery or primary uh, levels uh, adopted this way, uh, adopted this way of teaching, uh, wherein uh, this uh, child are taught through uh, psychomotor development. Which includes uh, play, games, singing, you know, group uh, activities. That's how it works with the youngsters. The teacher role was not to drill or indoctrinate to the children, but rather to encourage their self-expression to play both individually and in group activities. What is Probel's theory? He believed that play is the highest expression of a human development in childhood, for it alone is the pre-expression of what is in the child's soul. According to Provol, in play, children construct their understanding of the world through direct experience with it. What are Frederick Provol's gifts? The one we were mentioning earlier, the gifts. Provol created a set of gifts to support children's learning and development in his kindergarten in Germany in the 1840s. This gifts includes six sets of cubes, spears, and cylinders, and include one of the first sets of wooden blocks developed specifically for young children to explore, create, and play with it. The first gift was intended by Provo to be given to very young children. His intention was that through holding, dropping, rolling, and swinging, or hiding and revealing the balls, the child may acquire knowledge of objects and spatial relationship. Spatial, which means uh, visual or the sight. Movement, speed and time, color and contrast, and weights and gravity. Last but not the least, we have Johann Frederick Herbert. Johann Frederick Herbert was born on May 4, 1776 in Oldenburg and died August 14, 1841 in Hanover in Germany. He is a German philosopher and educator who led the renewed 19th century's interest in realism and is considered among the founders of modern scientific pedagogy. And when we say pedagogy, it has something to do with child's learning. What is the philosophy of Herbert? In philosophy, Herbert anticipated key ideas of phenomenology, such as Brentano's conception of mental phenomena, and his ideas of representational force, the limit, and reproduction all find positive endorsement and development in Husserl's Phenomenology. Phenomenology is the study of structures of consciousness as experienced from the first person point of view. The central structure of an experience is its intentionality, its being directed towards something as it is an experience or, or about some object. So, from Johann Frederick Harbert. Learning is based from experience. What is Herbertian lesson plan? Lesson plan, as we all know, is the teacher's detailed description of the course of instruction or learning trajectory for a lesson. A daily lesson plan is developed by a teacher to guide class learning. And details will vary depending on the preference of the teacher, subject being covered, and the needs of students. Now we have daily lesson loud, and we have the the the, the newest we, we have the 
quickly home learning plan when it comes to uh, learning trajectory of lessons. What are the Herbartian steps? This approach, generally known as Herbartian five steps approach, in a procedure of the Herbartian school propagated by John Frederick Harbart in 1776 to 1841 in his followers. This uh, five Herbartian steps include the following as advocated by Harbart that is composed of five formal steps in teaching. So the first step in, uh, in Herbartian teaching is the preparation, a process of relating new material to be learned to relevant past ideas or memories in order to give the pupil a vital interest in the topic under consideration. Second, the presentation, wherein you are going to present new material by means of concrete object or actual experience. The third step includes association, thorough assimilation of the new idea through comparison with the former ideas and consideration of their similarities and differences in order to implant the new idea in the mind. Fourth, we have generalization, a procedure especially important to the instruction of adolescents and designed to develop the mind beyond the level of perception and concrete. And the last is the application, using acquired knowledge not in a purely utilitarian way, but so that every learned idea becomes a part of the functional mind and an aid to clear vital interpretation of life. Again, the five steps in her passion way of teaching is first, the preparation, second, the presentation, third, association, fourth, we have generalization, and fifth, we have the application. Now in Calabarzon, we are making use, in our lesson exemplar, we are making use of the IDEA acronym that stands for Introduction, um, Development, Engagement, and Application. So I think uh, that's how over time uh, the steps in lesson planning evolved. And uh, what is the goal of Herbartianism in education? Herbart believed in maintaining the integrity of a student's individuality for as long as possible during the educational process, as well as the emphasis on moral training. The goal of Herbartianism was to aid students in their learning process, beginning from no knowledge, zero knowledge, or to complete knowledge. An improvement, growth, growth, progress, and development. Did you learn a lot? Awesome. I really hope so. And to close this, I would like to leave you a message coming from the book Educational Psychology. It was a statement made by Corpus in 1979. The memorandum was entitled uh, More on Teaching. And the statement goes like this. Our problem of teaching do not start from outside the teacher. They do not start from the system. They start and grow from what the teacher brings to the task and from his or her response to the system. We can improve teaching only if we first think over why we teach, what we teach, how we teach, and who we teach. Close quote. I, myself, as a practicing professional, ask the same questions, and I hope you do the same as future educators. Again, this has been your discussant, Sir Mark Anthony Paloma, saying thank you and see you all. Bye-bye! Alright, so thank you very much. Uh, Doc uh, Paloma, for a very comprehensive discussion 
Uh, ta- talaga namang na-refresh ako ano, sa ating mga great philosophers. And syempre, yung mga ism ng college. Ayan. So, naalala ko tuloy yung college yung mga uh, about ism. So, again, thanks, Doc Mark. Okay, so temperature check po tayo. Right? Okay, so paki-type nga po ang one sa ating chat box and also sa ating YouTube. Kung okay na okay pa tayo. Okay po? Ayan. So thank you. Okay, and then nadagdagan na rin yung ating mga um, viewers sa YouTube. Check ko nga. Shoutout muna tayo while uh, nagpe-prepare ang ating next speaker. Okay. Ayan. So, hello kay Ma'am Leanne Kate Menancho from LSPU Santa Cruz, BPLED, major in Home Economics 3A. Hello, Ma'am. Ayan, soon to be. And to Ma'am Angelica Santos ng Pila District. Hello po. Kay uh, Sir Shawn Maynard Ortega. Good morning, Sir. From BED 2B, LSPU. And Ma'am Rose Ann Escobel from Pila District also. Kate Karen C. Liwanag. Hello. Aha, from BED 2B. Ayan. So, chine-check siguro ng prof nyo, no? And also to Ma'am Emery and Diza. BTLED2AHE, ka HE, ka Home Economics, ka TLE. And of course, aming classmate, Ma'am Roda. And also, DNE, Edu, DNE's Edu Corner. Yan. And also, Ma'am Dalia. Hello, Ma'am Da. Okay. Ma'am Trisha Lynn. Aha, uh-huh. Gime from BED 2A, LSPU Santa Cruz also. Ayan. So, hello po and good morning. Huwag po kayong bibitaw, no? Kahit bumitaw ang ating uh, internet uh, connection. Thank you po. Okay. So, move na tayo sa ating uh, next speaker. And make sure na palagi tayong may water. Okay po. So our next speaker is a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Electronics and Communication Engineering at AMA Santa Cruz Campus in 2002. She took units in education at Union College Santa Cruz Laguna in 2014. And in 2015, she passed the licensure examination for teachers. She was hired as a college instructor in LSPU for three years and currently has been teaching for four years at Pakil Senior High School, Pakil Laguna. She graduated her master's degree in education major in mathematics at Laguna State Polytechnic University in 2019. At present, she taking up Doctor of Education, major in Educational Management at the same school, LSPU Santa Cruz Campus. Let us give a virtual clap for Mrs. Leia P. Mejola. Hello, Ma'am Leia. Hello, Dr. Rona. Rinig na po. Yes, ma'am. Loud and clear. Thank you, ma'am. Pa-present na lang po. Thank you po. Good morning, everyone, and to our participants, students from BEA. From different locations, virtually. EDUC 601, Philosophical Foundation of Education, our professor here, Prof. Henley F. Martires. Good morning. Good morning, classmates. I'm the presenter for this moment, Leia Pimenjola. 
and my topic for classical and contemporary philosophical framework, philosophy of education vis-a-vis -vis progressive education. So from the word framework, philosophical foundation of curriculum, philosophy provides educators, teachers, and curriculum makers with framework for planning, implementing, and evaluating curriculum in schools. It helps in answering what school are for, what subject are important, how students should learn, and what materials and methods should, should be used. In decision-making, philosophy provides the starting point and will be used for the succeeding decision-making. The philosophy of curriculum planner, implementer, or evaluator reflects his or her life experiences, common beliefs, social and economic background, and education. There are three genres of education. From the topic of Doc Mark, philosophers, let us classify them in three genres. Next po, ma'am. The, the three genres of education are classical education, modern education, and contemporary education. When we say classical education, Classical covers everything before from ancient time until the 19th century. So it includes Aristotle, Socrates, Plato. What do we mean by classical education? From the dictionary definition, the word classical means uh, of pertaining to or in accordance with the ancient Greek and Roman Precedence. Classicism means attitudes and principles based on the culture, art, and literature of ancient Greek and Rome. The modern education is, is pertaining to recent times or to the present, not ancient, so this present time. When we say modern education, from the dictionary definition, progressive education means mean of relating to or influenced by a theory of education characterized by emphasis on the individual needs and capacities of each child in formality of curriculum. Uh, from this uh, modern education, so dun sa sinabi kanina ni Doc Mark na mga influences ng philosophers contribute yung nag-contribute itong mga philosophers na to para magkaroon ng innovation of education. So, yung last na genre is the contemporary education. Contemporary education, contemporary philosophy has many applications in technology, data, and others. Yes, po, ma'am. Um, I'm going to discuss individually the major philosophies of education. Naturalism, idealism, realism, pragmatism, existentialism, and the postmodern perspective. This will be discussed individually. So, naturalism means naturalism ex explains all the natural phenomena on the basis of natural laws. According to these views, nature itself, the ultimate reality. So, how are we going to teach in naturalism? First is learning by doing, uh, playway method, learning by experience or activity method, self-government and self-effort of students to learn by themselves, and last yung observation method. In naturalism, uh, they observe what is the what is in their environment, so uh, they will adapt 
what is in their uh, environment. Under naturalism is the perennialism. Perennialism means nature, including human nature. Nature is constant. Education is the preparation for future life. So in perennialism, we teach math, science, and particularly literature are important. So they expose learners to the rigors of logical thought, the great ideas that have endured throughout history. So this naturalism uh, under perennialism, perennials, are classified into classical education. Next is the idealism. Since the physical world is continu uh, constantly changing, ideas are the only reliable form of reality. Ideal situation, what you would like to happen. So perfect marriage. Uh, when we uh, think of a perfect marriage, we have to uh, learn it when somebody teach us. Uh, yung nasa isip natin na ideal na perfect marriage, kailangan ano yung uh, ay, ang ideas natin doon is ah, may nagturo sa akin kung paano ito. Uh, hindi pa natin ito nakikita. Gagamitin lang natin yung senses natin kapag realism na. So, yung uh, ideas pa lang yung gumagana dito sa, sa atin. So, under idealism is the essentialism. Back to the basic. Nakikita nyo dyan yung RRR na palagi natin ginagamit. Read, write, and arithmetic. So, learning should uh, focus on essential basic skills. Yun nga yung sinasabi natin, read, write, and arithmetic. Reading, writing, mathematics, and to a certain extent, science and geography. The belief that core of information exists that all people should possess. Reform, aim, and improving teaching training. So, under ng idealism, yung essentialism na gumagamit tayo ng uh, read, write, and arithmetic para maturuan natin yung bata. Uh, ide idealism uses mind. Dun sa next natin na uh, philosophy, the realism is by the use of the senses. The pictures of the universe exist whether or not a human being is there to perceive them. An oak tree outside the window, so yon gumagamit na tayo ng senses nun kasi nakikita natin. An oak tree outside the window. You can perceive it to be anything you want, but it's still an oak. Philosophy of realism emphasizes observation, experimentation, and critical reasoning. So pag nakita na natin yun, uh, kanina sinabi yung uh, perfect marriage. So, hindi natin yun masasabi na perfect marriage unless tayo na yung mismo na andun sa situation. Tayo yung makakaramdam, makakakita, makaka-experience ng lahat ng nandun. So, kanina idea pa lang natin. Ngayon, ia-apply na natin. Pero yung application niya is magagamit pa natin yun doon sa pragmatism. The next philosophy is the pragmatism. Pragmatism rejects the idea of absolute unchanging truth. Instead, truth is what works, hence term pragmatism. In this case, experience is the key idea. Individuals need method for dealing with changes. Pragmatic solution. So here in pragmatism, we have to apply, practice what are in our mind. So this is the application of the idealism. Kung naiisip pa lang natin siya dito sa pragmatism, ia-apply na natin siya. So pragmatism doesn't the emphasize the importance of knowledge. Instead, it attempts to connect it to the children's interest. So from pragmatism, pupunta doon sa magkakaroon ng innovation of education sa 
progressivism. So progressive education. So before mag magkaroon ng progressivism, meron yung existentialism. Humanity isn't part of an orderly universe. Individuals create their own existence in their own unique way. With freedom comes responsibility, emphasis on the individual. So we don't teach math, science, reading, and writing because uh, ang pinofocus dito is yung being. We teach people, the people we teach are the core learning. So doon tayo nakafocus. Kasi kanina, ang focus nung essentialism is yung uh, RRR. Dito naman sa existentialism is ang focus is yung people or the learner. Learner-centered curriculum instruction. So, after ng existentialism is the postmodernism. Here, critically examine today's institution elevate the status of marginalized people, women, and cultural minorities. Facilitate discussions that involve clarifying issues. Discussion, so how do we uh, teach postmodernism by role-playing, simulation, personal research, and yung community-oriented or self-regulated. After na itong discussion, magkakaroon ng summary para mas ma-apply natin to sa ating pag-aaral. Sa at magagamit din natin to sa pagkuha natin ng uh, exam. So the last part is the progressivism. After natin ma-apply dun sa pragmatism, dun tayo sa progressivism. Problem solving and learning concept. In a progressivism curriculum that focuses on the real world, problem solving, and individual development. So, uh, meron din tayong makikita sa YouTube na review from Carl Balita yung about learning and development. Magkaiba yung dalawa. Sa development, hindi natin kailangan ng uh, read-write arithmetic. Development yung uh, ang bata ay natuto na tumayo, lumakad. So, yun yung development. Sa learning naman, nat, uh, natutunan niya yung uh, mag, 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 magbasa, magsulat, yan, magsod ng problem. Yun yung pagkaka, pagkakaiba ng learning and development. So, insurance ad, advertise progressive insurance. So, according dito naman sa... Critic says, places too much emphasis on student interest and self-esteem. So, constructivism. So, dito na din sa progressivism, under niya yung constructivism. So, dito tayo sa uh, summary ng lahat ng na-discuss. Pero masasama lang din dito yung mga uh, inaral nyo doon sa inyong DED mga perennialism, yung mga ganun. Yan. Ito po yung summary. Lakihan ko lang po yung aking. Yan. Meron tayo, inaral natin yung first part ito, ontology, epistemology, sociology, at yung last, educational implication. So, for the uh, idealism, idea, ideas from the word itself, ideas. So, reality is in the world of unchanging ideas. Yung uh, epistemology niya, knowing the personal rethinking of universal ideas. Thus, astrology values are absolute based on enduring ideas. Uh, sa idealism kasi, uh, dito kasama yung mga... Essential. What are essentials? So, the educational impl implications, curricula for focus on the content 
that emphasis time honored idea so idealism from the word itself ideas so lahat ng uh, idea ng uh, learners or ng children uh, realism reality in the physical world so, according to sa sinabi kanina kung ano yung gumagamit tayo ng uh, senses knowing is observing and understanding natural laws okay values are absolute based on natural law kanina din na discuss ni doc mark yung mga tungkol sa mga behavior sa mga attitudes so nag-contribute talaga yung mga philosophers para magkaroon ng ed, uh, innovation in education uh, under realism then yung curricula focus on the content that emphasizes natural laws so pragmatism ito na yung uh, you use and you practice pragmatism reality is the interaction of the individual and the environment knowing is the result of experience based on the scientific method values are related and curricula and instruction focus on problem solving and the scientific method sa existentialism reality is the subject interpretation of the physical world knowing is making personal choice values are chosen by the individual instruction emphasis emphasizes discussion des designed to increase individual self awareness so kung ano yung nag exist so magkaiba yung essential at existentialism Yung last po ay up, uh, classroom application of educational philosophy. So, i-apply na natin siya doon sa ating classroom. Sa perennialism, para may apply natin, ang education goal natin is to train the intellect of the child. Focus on enduring ideas. So, this is how we're going to apply it in our classroom the perennialism. So, lecture, questioning, discussion, learning environment. Sa perennialism is high structure, strong focus on academic work. And yung assessment natin sa perennialism is uh, frequent assessment and feedback. Okay? Sa essentialism naman, para i-apply natin into our classroom, Acquire the basic skills needed to function in today's world. Curriculum, essential knowledge and basic skills. Gagamit ng mga essential knowledge and basic skills. So, the teaching method we're going to use in essentialism is lecture, questioning, practice, and feedback. Learning environment, high structure, strong focus on essential knowledge and skills. For assessment in essentialism, frequent objective and performance assessment and feedback. For the progressivism, develop problem-solving decision-making and other life skills. So for curriculum, practice in problem-solving and other life skills. Emphasizes application in problem-based learning, cooperative learning, and guided discovery. Progressivism, learning environment, democratic, collaborative emphasis on learning responsibility. Kasi nga, progressivism, so kailangan ano, sila mismo uh, nakakapag-interpret, bibigay nila yung idea nila. So, emphasis on learner responsibility. Assessment for progressivism is ongoing informal assessment. So, for social reconstructivism, na nag-develop na siya, uh, natututo yung bata. Kaya meron social reconstructionism contribute to the creation of a just society. <clears throat> social issues, discussion, collaboration, student projects, model for equity and justice, and yung assessment for social reconstructionism is examination of written products 
and informal observation. At para naman dun sa classroom application ng educational philosophies for perennialism, existentialism, progressivism, and postmodernism, yung next po, ah, uh, Yan. Ito ay mga lumalabas ito sa board exam. Paano daw natin i-apply or classroom application of the educational philosophies? So sa perennialism, yun ay idealism at realism. Kasi nga, uh, ang perennialism, under yan ang naturalism, di ba? So dito, ang goal natin dito is to train the intellect, the moral development. Ang curriculum natin sa perennialism emphasis on enduring ideas. And the role of the teacher is to deliver clear lectures, increase student understanding with critical questions. Our teaching method should be lecture, questioning, coaching, in intellectual thinking. Our learning environment, high structure, high levels of time on task, and our assessment here in perennialism is frequent, objective, and essay test. And to apply essentialism in our classroom, okay, our educational goal is to acquire basic skills, acquire knowledge needed to function in today's world, and the curriculum emphasis on basic skills. Essentialism is to deliver clear lectures, increase student understanding with critical questions and we're going to give lectures practice and feedback and questioning so for learning environment ng essentialism high structure high level of time on task and frequent objective essay for the assessment and performance test so progressivism naman para natin i-apply sa ating classroom is to acquire, the educational goal is to acquire ability, ability to function in the real world, develop problem-solving skills, and the curriculum emphasis on the problem-solving and, and skills needed in today's world. So the role of the teacher in progressivism is to guide learner with questioning, develop and guide practical problem-solving activities. Again, the teaching methods we're going to have a problem-based learning, cooperative learning, and guided discovery. Kasi nagpo-progress nga sila. Uh, collaborative, self-regulated, and democratic. So gusto nila ng mga bata dito ay uh, nakakapag-share uh, sila. So free sila kasi it's in a democratic way. So continuous feedback, informal monitoring of student progress yung assessment and for our postmodernism our educational goal is to critically examine today's institutions elevate the status of marginalized people yan na discuss to kanina so postmodernism is yan community oriented self regulated so, dito naman, emphasis on the world of marginalized people, the role of the teacher is to facilitate discussion that involve clarifying issues. So, dito nagkakaroon ng uh, discussion, role play, simulation, personal research, and for the assessment in postmodernism, we have to collaborate between teacher and students emphasis on the exposure of hidden assumptions. So from our major philosophies, sana meron kayong nakuhang kahit konting knowledge, share ko lang din na um, para magkaroon tayo ng deeper na review dito at mag-connect-connect -connect yung mga philosophies dun sa ibang philosophies. Uh, merong explain si uh, Carl Balita doon sa mga philosophies na to. So, yung reference ko for this, ito po, yun po. Ayan. Thank you po, and sana po meron kayong knowledge na nakuha. Good morning.
Wow, thank you, Ma'am Gaya. Ayan. So, talagang uh, very concise but detailed yung discussion mo. And po, so, big help talaga to, lalo na dun sa ating mga students na nanonood ngayon uh, sa kanilang uh, review no, kung sila ay magka-take ng exam sa about uh, foundation of education. Yeah. So, thank you, Ma'am Gaya. Okay, so, kung meron kayong questions, clarification, ipopost po namin ang link ayan, sa ating chat box para po sa uh, inyong question. Ipo. Okay. So, move na tayo sa ating uh, next speaker po. Okay. Our uh, third speaker is one of the SDO Laguna ICT-PWG awarded as overall best ICT practice in the SDO Laguna and second place in Region 4A Calabar Zone, an outstanding high school teacher during the Gawad Anilag, and I am proud to say that he is also one of the second qualifiers in the Metro Bank Outstanding Filipino for Teachers in the national level, a master teacher too of Pila Senior High School, pride of Pila District. Let us welcome my better half to discuss to us about legal basis to education, education as a human right, Mr. Dariel A. Peralta. Hello, Sir Dariel. Naka-off pa ang microphone mo. Ayan. Hello. <laughs> okay, wait lang ha. So, ang hirap pala na kapag ka ikaw ay discuss at at the same time, streamer. <laughs> okay. So, sige po, uh, let me share my screen na para... Mawala yung aking... Uh... Okay! <clears throat> so, ayan. So, uh, since we are live, you will be uh, seeing uh, movements from me. Ayan. And also, baka may mga movements din na makita sa likod at may mga <laughs> kasama po ako dito sa likod ngayon. By the way, um, magandang umaga sa ating lahat, uh, especially to uh, our... Dean of GSAR, Dr. Florida Pamatmat, to our uh, LSP Extension uh, Chairperson, our Professor uh, Dr. Henley Martirez, sa ating mga kaklasmates dito sa EDOC 601, the Philosophy uh, of Education, <coughs> Philosophy, Philosophical Foundation of Education, to Mamrona, our uh, great host, facilitator for <coughs> this day, for this session. At sa atin pong mga kasamang guro at mga estudyante na nanonood ngayon uh, live on YouTube, magandang magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. So this has been, hindi pa tayo tapos actually, uh, it's already 10.48 pero we're already uh, nandun pa lamang tayo sa half. Pero yung mga susunod na discussions naman ay... Um, ayan na yun, nawala yung audio. Ayan. Uh, Sort of uh, deepening na lang doon sa mga na-discuss kanina. <clears throat> we would like to congratulate uh, Sir Mark Paloma and Ma'am Lea Menjola for, for a detailed, concise, but detailed presentation of their uh, reports or topics. Sabi nga ni Ma'am Rona kanina habang nakikwentuhan kami sa, sa backstage, ayan, ay uh, bumabalik sa aming isipan yung mga panahon na tayo ay nagre-review or uh, nag uh, nag uh, aaral noong college lalo kapag naririnig natin yung mga ism ism ayan <laughs> so it is very it is very very memorable for for the teachers ano po uh, dahil isa yan sa pinagdaanan natin so para dun sa mga viewers natin ngayon sa YouTube sa ating live stream na magte-take ng let <clears throat> Uh, isa ito sa mga mag magagandang topics talaga na dapat ninyong mapanood at mabalikan dahil uh, maraming malaking factor nito ang binibigay talaga dun sa mga ganong klase ng uh, 
examinations. So I am here to discuss to you, uh, to discuss to you guys the legal basis of education, or or, or in other term, education as a human right. I am Daryl Peralta po from Pila, Sen- Pila Senior High School, Master Teacher too. Um, in relation to our uh, previous topics, um, how how do we uh, how do we appreciate education, kasi, di ba? So we have. We have free education, we have almost everything, but up to what extent are we uh, availing, are we using those uh, <clears throat> things, okay? So, dun, dun may, dun, dito sa ating discussion ngayon is ididipin natin yung kahulugan ng edukasyon bilang isang karapatang pantao. So ayan, sabi ko nga sa inyo, uh, may mga movements tayong makikita sa likod. But anyways, uh, let's just focus on what we will be discussing for this uh, morning. Okay. So uh, before we uh, go to the uh, topic topic itself, meron lang akong question. Ano po, kung ako ay uh, rinig ng aking mga kasama dito sa sa Zoom, Okay, kung ako ay rinig ng mga kaklase ko dito sa Zoom, may tanong po ako sa inyo. So what was your best, what was my best, or what was your best moment during your class, nung face-to-face pa tayo, and how can you have more moments like it? So this is some sort of a reflection nung tayo ay nasa old normal pa. Okay, so... Uh, Again, the question is, what was my best moment during my class? And how can I have more moments like this? Ayan, so uh, <clears throat> for those who are uh, watching on YouTube, you can, you can uh, comment your answers para may interaction tayo. Para naman dito sa nasa Zoom, maybe tatawag na lang po ako ng uh, mga pwedeng sumagot. You may open your cameras po. Or kung medyo nahihiya, okay lang naman po. Magbukas na lamang po ng uh, microphone. Ayan. So, uh, pwede ko po bang tawagin si Ma'am Lori V? Ayan. Ma'am Lori V, are you there? Hello po. Ayan. Ayan. So, Ayan. good morning po. Good morning uh, sa lahat po ng aming um, YouTube uh, viewers. Uh, sa lahat po na sa, sa ating Zoom. So, good morning po. My best moment during my class, nung ako ay teacher, siguro yung interaction with my pupils. Yung, yung nagkakaroon tayo ng talagang palita ng bawa. Kung ano yung napifeel nila. Diba, minsan, confidante rin kasi tayo ng mga bata. So, those things, so yun yung mga hindi, yun yung mga best moment that I considered na talagang... Uh, very memorable sa akin kung pa paano sila mag-interact with me as their teacher, as their friend. So, yun yung mga namimiss ko. So, yun yung kasing wala na ngayon, eh, di ba? And how can I have more moments like it? Sana, sana, uh, bumalik na tayo sa new normal. Kaya sana, let's all accept uh, vaccination program positively. You know, so, para maka- makamalik na tayo sa, sa ating uh, paaralan and to have in to have a uh, physical interaction with our pupils. So yun kasi yung mga masasayang moment with them. Joke time. So yun, yun. So thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much Ma'am Lori. Sino ba naman ang hindi Ma'am Lori V, sino ba naman ang hindi makakamiss doon sa uh, ganong klase ng scenario natin, 'di ba? So iba rin yung nakikita natin, iba rin yung uh, nakaka-interact natin sila personally, tibo ba? So thank you very much for that, Ma'am Lori B. I, I think we have the same uh, uh, answer to that question. Another another po na classmate na gusto ko mag-share is uh, Ma'am Mercy. Are you there, Ma'am Mercy? Ma'am Mercy dita pa biko. <laughs> I'm thinking that you will call me, sir. <laughs> mukhang, mukhang alam mo na eh. <laughs> Well, alam mo okay. Na. Okay, okay. Okay, good morning everyone, especially our YouTube watchers and of course our professor uh, Dr. Henry. And of course, to my brilliant classmates, especially the group uh, two who is doing great uh, as of today as of this moment. Okay, my best classroom moment when I was a teacher. Actually, I always assess myself 
with the way I teach, the way I handle the class through my through my daughter because she is one of my students then uh, in senior high school. And at the end of the day, I always ask, ask her, how am I for today? And he, she has the one statement about me, one sentence, about, one word about me is that, Mom, you're too, Mama, you're too formal that when you're in the school, you are actually, you're not a brilliant teacher, <laughs> sabi niya. But uh, when you are in front of the class, as if ever, you are too formal to, to, ano, to be wed. Kaya, kaya yung mga classmates ko, ayaw nila na kapag ikaw ang teacher, seryoso sila. <laughs> Kasi I usually have this policy in my class na... I will leave the room. Before I leave the room, make sure that you have shared a thought of the learnings you have in a day. Kaya there are times na kahit umalis na ako sa class, hinahabol pa ako ng estudyante kasi magre-resign. Sabi niyo, Mom, I did not speak when you are in class kasi po nahiya ako but I want to recite now. Kasi alam nila na uh, when they recite, they will get a points. And when they recite, I, I will have that a uh, word in the exam <laughs> yung statement kasi lahat uh, may may bonus exam kasi ako may bonus points kasi ako for the exam okay so, yes, share a word on that day yan, on our topic that day so yun siguro and uh, that is kasi gusto ko i want to be a remarkable teacher every day <laughs> and that perhaps has been applied. Kaya sa kagabi, uh, yesterday kasi I have a whole day uh, conversation, one-on-one conversation with my colleague in the school. And <laughs> uh, natapos nito ako 6 o'clock. So, when I about to sleep about around 11.30 a.m., a uh, teacher chatted me and said, Ma'am, now I realize you're the best principal <laughs> for me now. So, parang it's a warm comment, it's a warm statement from a colleague saying that you are the best teacher and knowing that the teacher is a promising teacher. So I don't know, how is it? Maybe it's just because of my presence. Thank you, Po. Okay, thank you very much for sharing, Ma'am, uh, Ma'am Mercy. Ayon. So, um, kasi naiintindihan ko si Ma'am Mercy, eh. uh, we really need to be um, as formal as possible when it comes to uh, um, presenting in front of the class. But, you know, um, may mga times talaga na uh, we really need to do something uh, unusual. Nang sa gayon, mas may reflect din natin or mas may pakita natin ng, alam nyo na, ng yung kakaibang side natin. Because, uh, you know, our students always look up upon us. So, ayun, maybe uh, nagigets ko yung part nung kay Ma'am Mercy kasi ganun din ako minsan sa mga sudyante ko. And one thing I love about what Mercy, Ma Mercy said is about the yung yung kanyang pag-compliment ng teacher. It is true. Um, hindi natin masasabi yun uh, <coughs> sa atin, sa sarili natin that we are we are good in something, we are good in everything, we are outstanding uh, uh, person in in a specific task. Ganon. <coughs> Dahil hindi natin pwede sabi yun. Yung eh. mga pagsabi talaga ng SD, yung yung mga tao sa paligid natin, uh, sila yung makakapag-express nun. Kasi kahit sabihin natin, ang oh, magaling ako diyan Pero hindi yun yung dating sa kanila. I, I, I don't think na may, may bearing. May bearing yung, yung, yung word. Ano po? So thank you for that, Ma'am Mercy. Um, and Ma'am uh, Lori V, such a wonderful sharing of your thoughts. So, uh, so to think back. Think back to that moment and who experienced it with you. Ang question is, how was it equally valuable for them to be a part of your moment? And so sabi natin dito is, uh, may, nandun yung moment, nandun yung moment. So how was it important to them? How was it valuable to them for them to be part of your <clears throat> moment? So in my case, the, syempre marami tayong moments sa school. Marami tayong moments na uh, something, to, something to be proud of. Okay? Something to be proud of. So there was this uh, uh, competition na nabanggit po ng Mamrona kanina, which is the ICT Summit. And we won. One of the greatest moments po yun ng aking... Nag-feedback, ma'am? 
Okay. So, ayun. Masasabi kong uh, memorable moment para sa aming klase, not just for me, but with my students. Because we, my project, our project, masasabi ko laging our, I can't say that it is my or I own it dahil yung project is an organization. I made an organization for the students. So it is a we. We made an organization for the students. And it is, it is hailed as the best ICT practice in SDO Laguna on 2017. It is memorable for us, actually, uh, for, for me and Mamrona, because Mamrona is, ha, has, has been our consultant for years. At yung program na yon ay sa hindi naman namin inaasahan na mapaparangalan as best in SDO Laguna, na naging second pa nga sa region. So best moment for my class, why? Kasi it is, it is, We, we made an organization. I made an organization with them. So we, we grow together. Okay? We made a world. We made a family in that organization. That's why we created outputs just like how family works. Hindi ba sa pamilya kapag ka, uh, when we say family, walang ano dyan eh. Walang... Di natin alam, di ka masa- I, I, I cannot generalize. Pero family works together, family loves each other, uh, each member. Ganun yun. So maghihigitan pataas. That is the, I, I cannot say that that is my indoctrination, but that's how we naturally um, express our, our um, How, how am I going to call that? Our care for each member. My members are uh, senior high school students. So, ayun. Um, nag-focus kami sa pagtulong sa mga batang may kakayahan sa ICT. At yung hindi itinuturo sa school, nagkakaroon ako ng special sessions para maituro yun sa kanila. Uh, extra time. Ayan. So, extra effort para maturoan. And then, yung mga batang yun ngayon, yung isa, yung isa may ari na ng... Uh, printing press. Yung isa po ay kung nakikinig po ngayon ang ating mga taga-LSPU, you know, Aaron Dominic Malaga. He is your uh, chief editor sa The Gears. Ayan, isudyante ko po yan at kasama po siya doon sa sinasabi kong organization. Yung isa ngayon ay may-ari ng kapihan. At yung mga graphics, yung mga natutunan nila doon sa aming uh, organization ay nagagamit na po nila ngayon. U- u- meron akong designer, naka- designer na ngayon sa Makati. Um, ang ganda. Ang ganda. If you know how to create a world for your student and if uh, nai-instill mo sa kanilang pag-iisip na ang pag-aaral, ang matuto sa paaralan, ay mahalaga, ay may bunga pagdating ng panahon, you are changing a life. And that is, yani kita ka sa screen. <laughs> that's, my, that's my eldest daughter. And that is, I think, the most important role of a teacher to create a world, a better world for your students. So that's why we, I always say, um, gaano na enjoy ng mga estudyante natin yung kanilang education? Gaano nila na nakakamit yung tamang edukasyon para sa kanila? It is a two-way process Actually, lagi natin sinasabi, it takes a community to raise a child. Yes, it is. Um, pero papaano? Nangyayari ba? Okay? Me and Ma'am Ron, I are always, you know, um, brainstorming about things na may kinalaman sa education because that is our life, actually. Um, uh, most of our time, we spend it with the work. Okay? And our profession is teaching. So, ayon. Minsan, kahit kumakain, matutulog. Yun pa rin pa usapan natin. And one of the memorable things that uh, Ma'am Rona said to me, okay? So this is true. This is not a joke. This is not a... Um, this is not just to, to show you guys. But this is one thing that I have remembered Ma'am Rona told me uh, a while ago. For us to be able to create a life-changing world for our students, <clears throat> we must first need to understand how to craft this world for them. Okay? And that hits the heart of a teacher. Tingin ko kapag ka narinig nila yan, 
na sinasabi sa kanila, it will definitely hit the heart of a teacher. Okay? Because there are lots of teachers in this country, mara- actually kulang pa nga, okay, mamaya pag-uusapan natin yon. kulang pa nga, but how many of those teachers na nasa puso yung ginagawa? Okay? So yun yun. So think, I, I think I'm gonna have to thank Mamrona for this uh, quotation because it really is one of the, uh, I think, a teacher should possess. Lalo't higit kapag papasok ka sa education. For, the edu- for education students ngayon na nakikinig, pre- prepare yourselves. Ano, in, uh, you have to teach yourself na on how to craft a world for your future students. And it should start with you. Okay? It should start with you. So, presenting my topic objectives, objective number number one is to understand the right to education. Um, don't, wor- don't worry, mabilis lang po itong aking uh, discussion. Mapasarap lang tayo sa intro. Objective number two is to identify the legal basis of education. And number three is to interpret education as a human right. So, those were the three objectives for our topic for this uh, <coughs> period. So, the right to education. Ayan. For us teachers, this world is this world is their education kasi. The, uh, this is their education, this world. And learning is their life in that world. So, understanding the foundation of education aids in the development of professionalism, human character, and personality for those participating in the educational system. So once that you have uh, decided, as uh, mga students natin na nakikinig ngayon, so once that you have decided to be with us in the, education, in the educational system, you really have to understand the foundations of education. Okay. Um, it also aids in the direction of maintaining a strong sense of duty. Uh, iba yung alam natin yung ginagawa natin. Okay. Hindi lamang sa dahil alam natin yung subject matter. Okay? We have to be subjective din sa sa mga ibinibigay natin sa estudyante, especially today, especially nowadays na hindi tayo nasa normal na panahon. So there are lots of studies na nagsasabi na maraming emotional stress ang na nararanasan ng mga estudyante natin ngayon. So you should be able to know how to cope up with that as a teacher. I want you to remember this. There is no best teaching strategy talaga. Because teachers are known to be flexible to the needs of learn of their learning environment. Flexible tayo eh. Ang pagiging guro talaga nandiyan na yung lahat. Uh, uh, yung iba sa atin ay while teaching ay naggumagawa ng ibang task. Yung iba naman while teaching gumagawa ng reports. Yung iba, while teaching, gumagawa ng videos. And something na gano'n. Ang dami. So, the characteristics kasi of good teaching is uh, it includes the responsibility of a teacher. Okay? A good teacher uh, works tirelessly to cultivate the desirable characteristics of a student. Uh, in addition to being source of wisdom and in reality, a facilitator of learning. A teacher's job is to make sure that all of his or her students learn from positive characteristics or moral values. So, right to education. Is it a privilege or a right? Okay? So, according to the United, United Nations Treaty Collections on 2021, baby hupo. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. The right to education has been recognized okay, as a human right in a number of international conventions which, which recognizes a right to free, compulsory primary education for all, an obligation to develop secondary education accessible to all, on particular by the progressive uh, introduction of free secondary, as well as an obligation to, de- to develop equitable access to higher education, ideally by the progressive introduction of free higher education. Um, in 2021, there are already 171 countries uh, or parties na dito sa covenant na ito, including the Philippines. That is according to United Nations Treaty Collections 
2021. But if we will um, look on the internet about the international legal basis for the declaration for the declaration of uh, the right to education, it will give you many results. Napakarami. Banggitin ko yung iba. So we have the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights on 1966, the Convention on the Rights of the Child on 1989, and Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women on 1979. So yan ay napaka rami po. Um, kulang yung, siguro, I think kulang yung oras natin ngayon, kung i-discuss natin yung mga yon. But if we dig deeper, if we will dig deeper, on the resources that we have right now, we will find the most popular article when it comes to the right to education. And that is the Article 26 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. What was that? The Universal Declaration of Human Rights is an international document adopted by the United Nations General Assembly that enshrines the rights of, and freedoms of all human beings. So, bigay ko yung highlight. According to Article 26, everyone has the right to education. Education shall be free, at least in the elementary and the fundamental stages. Um, elementary education shall be compulsory. Technical and professional education shall be made, I think, generally available. And higher education shall, shall be accessible to all on the basis of merit. Yun yung number one. Second part is education shall be directed to the full development of human personality and to the strengthening of respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms. Article 26 from, uh, promotes the understanding, tolerance, and friendship among all nations, racial or religious groups, and shall further the activities of the United Nations for the maintenance of peace. Third is the parents have a prior right to choose the kind of education that shall be given to their children. Uh, those were the things na sinasabi sa Article 26 ng uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It is universal. So, buong mundo nagkakaisa dyan sa tatlong yan. Buong, buong, buong sangkatauhan ay sumasang-ayon na ang lahat ng tao sa mundo ay may karapatan sa edukasyon. But it is non-legally binding instrument. Okay? Pero ito ay may force with great political and moral force. Yan po. I would like to uh, emphasize that. So since its adoption, the right to education has been reaffirmed in numerous human rights treaties and declarations adopted by the United Nations. So, nasa sa mga ano na, nasa covenant na, nasa parties na, if they will put this into writing and make it as a law. Okay? But this is non-legally binding as a universal, uh, sabi na natin, universal uh, declaration. Pero ito ay sinusunod sa buong mundo. So, looking at those article, at that article, we can say, Guys, that education is indeed a human right. Okay? Uh, wala, wala tayong question doon. Basahin natin ang Article 26 ng Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Masasabi natin that education, wherever you are in the world, no matter what race, ano man ang kulay natin, education is a human right. And I think we, we can agree with that. So let's have a look at this, uh, these three ideas about education as a human right. So number one is education allows individual, individuals to exercise all their rights. So isipin natin ito mga kasama. Ano po? Being illiterate means not being able to, simple lang, ha? find directions to take a bus if you're illiterate. Okay? If you're illiterate, you're not able to understand the label on your medication bottle. Okay? Third, if you are illiterate, you cannot help your child with homework. Okay? Lalo na ngayon, modular distance learning, karamihan sa mga schools ngayon. And if you are illiterate, then 
you will be having problems in reading programs of political candidates and cast an informed vote. Magkakaroon tayo ng problema dyan. So, malapit na ang 2022. Dapat alam natin, marunong tayong magbasa. If you are illiterate, kung di ka nag-aral, yung mga simpleng bagay na yun, mahihirapan tayong gawin. So, as a basic education is, or a basic education is important to ensure that all individuals are aware of their rights. So, dapat, uh, yun nga, yung, yung simpleng edukasyon, yung simpleng pagkakatuto na tayo ay dapat nakakaintindi ay makapagdadala sa atin upang maintindihan din natin yung ating mga karapatan. Okay? Without an, with, without an education, is li- less, it is less likely to get a good paying job and decent housing. Uh, you will be having problems in participating in the democratic process or value education for future generations. So, paano mo mavavalue nga naman yung education sa future generations if you don't have it, if hindi mo na-enjoy yung right mo to be educated. There's evidence that educated citizens care more about the environment and uh, are more tolerant of others who are not like them and are more likely to strive for gender equality. Yung mga binanggit ko napaka-basic lang, pero without basic education, yun nga, magiging illiterate, hindi maintindihan. Magkakaroon tayo ng problema sa society. At alam naman natin yon sa mga kanya-kanyang lugar natin, I think, labas tayo, then look at our community, which is who. Eh, parang ganun yun eh. So, sino ba yung nakapag-aral sa hindi? How do they look like? We are not we are not discriminating, but that's the way it is. Okay? Number two is all children have a right to quality education. After huge improvements in access to education during the, the years of to, from 2000 to 2015, the, yung focus sa po ng global education ngayon has shifted to ensuring that children going to school actually learn and get the skills they need to lead productive and fulfilling lives. Na education natin ngayon talaga nagpo-focus na sa ating mga sa ating mga sa starters. Okay? Uh, ang, ang laki na daw ng pagbabago from 2000 to 2015 hanggang ngayon. Masabi natin ngayon. Okay, the way the way we teach, it is all focused on the learners sa talaga. Okay? And the third one is the all children should be offered the same opportunities. Equality. Even in countries that have reached universal enrollments, education available to children can vary greatly. Um, either because of location or socioeconomic status. For example, there are usually sufficient teachers in cities with larger school systems, but it is difficult to to attract qualified teachers to remote or rural areas. That is correct. That is true. I think you can relate on that. And to reach SDG4, we will be talking about this uh, Sustainable Development Goal 2030. SDG number four, uh, the world will need an additional 69 million teachers by 2030 to keep up with demographic, demographic growth. That is... Uh, from globalpartnership.org. Okay? Those were the numbers. Those were the facts. So all children should be offered the same opportunities. Ayan. So paano ma-offer? Ayan, kailangan natin ng mga teachers talaga. By 2030s, according to, according to them, we will be needing 69 million more teachers na magpa-practice dito sa ating uh, vocation. So if we look at it, if we look at it, teachers play a significant role in making these three things possible. Okay? Uh, teachers, ang laki ng, ang laki ng, ano, ang laki ng ating uh, tungkulin sa mga bata. Okay? Um, kaya yung mga viewers natin ngayon on YouTube na Taking Up Education, ngayon pa lang saludo na po kami sa inyo. Okay? Dahil uh, magiging kaisa namin kayo, magkakaroon na kami ng katulong sa pag pag uh, for making those three those three things possible. So teachers play really a significant role in making those three things. Teachers are life changers, teachers are influencers. Okay? So this is the sustainable development goal of 2030. Okay. So like let's take a look at this picture. 
This is the SDG. The Sustainable Development Goals, or SDG, are also known as the Global Goals, were adopted by the United Nations in 2015 as a universal call to action to end poverty. Um, it is also uh, created to protect the planet and to ensure that by 2030, all people will enjoy peace and prosperity. So, the 17 SDGs are integrated, interrelated with each other. They recognize that action in one area will affect outcomes in others, and that development must be balanced, uh, must balance social, economic, and environmental sustainability. Okay, but okay to the viewers, to my classmates, if we will focus on how this SDGs integrates itself. We can say that without number four, okay, what is number four? Number four is the quality education. Without number four, all of those goals will be disintegrated. Do you agree with me? Okay. Uh, if you agree with me, please type two on the chat box. Don't po sa ating YouTube kung hindi naman po sa Zoom. Okay. Um, the people or the mover of that goal without proper education, None of it will happen in 2030. Okay. So I think you, 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 walang nasagot. <laughs> but anyways, okay lang. So achieving inclusive and quality education for all reaffirms the belief that education is one of the most powerful and proven vehicles for sustainable development. This goal ensures that all girls and boys complete free primary and secondary schooling by 2030. It also aims to provide equal access to affordable vocational training to eliminate gender and wealth disparities and achieve universal access to quality higher education. So again, without number four, without number four, I think yung mga nandyan will be disintegrated. Dahil yun nga, um, malaki, malaki, yung, malaki yung factor kapag educated tayo sa ating, uh, sa ating kung paano tayo mamumuhay as a functional citizen ng ating uh, community. Okay? So, as I have mentioned earlier, the Article 26 of Universal Declaration of Human Rights is not legally binded. It's not legally bind a legally binding instrument. But with great political and moral force, nations adopted that idea. Okay? So, yung mga uh, Mga nations na ang nagpatupad nito sa kanila. So let us see these legal bases na nagpapatunay na dito sa ating bansa ay ipinopromote yung karapatan sa edukasyon. There are, and then sa Philippines din, there are lots of uh, acts, there are lots of uh, executive orders, pero pinili ko na lang I think yung anim na maaari nating uh, idipin or talakayin dito. Ano po? Um, ayan. So we have the 1935 Constitution, Article 14, Section 5. What does it say? The state shall protect and promote the right of all citizens to quality education at all levels and shall take appropriate steps to make such education access accessible to all. So 1935 pa. Ewan ko kahit yata, baka yung lolo ko siguro. Ayan. So nun pa lang, Actually, there are ano pa nga, uh, there are older, there are even older articles. Um, there are there is an educational decree of 1863. Way back pa, noon pa sinasabi na nila na ang edukasyon talaga ay meron talaga tapat tayo and pinoforce itong mga legal basis na ito na yung ating government, na yung ating locality or community is to enforce the right of education. Not actually to enforce, but it is a right kasi. But to practice at may promote yung right to education. We also have the Batas Pambansa Bilang 232 or the Education Act of 1982. This was an act providing for the establishment and maintenance of an integrated system of education. This act shall apply to, to and govern both formal and non-formal system in public and private schools in all levels of the entire educational system. So, 
kapag ka mag-aaral na kayo sa legal basis and madidipin natin yung batas pambansa bilang 232 na yan. We also have the 1987 Constitution, Article 14, Section 1. The state shall protect and promote the right of all citizens to quality education at all levels and shall take appropriate steps to make such education accessible to all. So what do we see here? Isa sila nang sinasabi, pero reiteration lamang yung gusto nilang mangyari. Um, one is saying that it is needed. One is establishing what is needed. And and uh, the other tells us that we we need to promote this need para magkaroon tayo ng magandang community. And also, we had the Republic Act 7722 or the Higher Education Act of 1994. Yung tatlo kasi sa, ano yun, may kinalaman dun sa medyo lower levels while on 7722. This act was created by the Commission on Higher Education or it created CHED. Okay? RA7722 created CHED whose main task is to regulate and develop tertiary education in the Philippines. So ayan, sa ating mga nasa tertiary levels ngayon, you should know this one. We also have the Republic Act 9155 or the Governance of Basic Education Act of 2001. Uh It declared the policy of the state to protect and promote the right of all citizens to quality basic education and to make such education accessible to all by providing all Filipino children a free and compulsory education in the elementary level and free education in the high school level. Okay? And ito, sa mga teachers, alam ko, familiar tayong lahat dito. The Republic Act 10533 or the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013. Yung pinaikling title lang po ang mga nilalagay ko dyan. There are longer titles pa. So, the state shall establish, maintain, and support a complete, adequate, and integrated system of education relevant to the needs of the people, the country, and society at large. Okay? So, those were the, um, I think, yung important legal basis na ating may, may share dito sa ating topic ngayon. But actually, there are numerous um legal basis pa relating to the right to education. So we have the, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina, we have the Educational Decree of 1863. Uh, it provides the establishment of primary school for boys and girls in each town of the country. We also have the Act Number no. 74 of 1901. It enacted into law by the Philippine Commission. Uh, it created the Republic, uh, Department of Public Instruction. So bago pa tayo pala magka-DepEd, magka-DEX noon, meron pa pala tayong Department of Public Instruction. We also have the Vocational Act of 1927 or also known as the Act number 3377, the Vocational Act as amended by other acts laid the foundation of ed- vocational education in public schools and made provisions for its support. We also have the Education Act of 1940 and Republic Act 6655 of 1920. 98, or popularly known as the Free Public Secondary Education Act of 1988, it, it created a system of free education in public high schools. Going back to sa sinabi ko kanina, yung sinabi ng uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, there is not, non, not legal, non-legally binding sa atin, but <clears throat> the nations like us, the Philippines, created a binder and it is in the form of Republic Acts or Educational Decree or Presidential dec- Decree. Yan yung nagpapatibay na, na nagbibigay or nagbibigay diin at nagbibigay a focus doon sa karapatan ng mga Pilipino na matuto. Kaya sa mga viewers natin ngayon, Kung kayo ay uh, nag-aaral maging teacher or kung tayo man ay teacher na po ngayon, ay may mga principal pa tayong kasama dito ngayon, we do hope na itong right to education ay mapalakas natin sa ating mga future students at sa ating mga estudyante ngayon. Because I think this is one of the things na naniniglik na, lalo ng mga kabataan. Ano po? Dumarami, dumarami yung mga kabataan natin na hindi nakapag-aaral because of their choice, only by of their by their choice. 
So, sana ay mapalawak natin yung persa ng edukasyon ng mas maraming matutong mga kabataang Pilipino at mas umunlad pa ang ating bansa. Okay? So, um, I guess uh, I am on on my uh, second to the last slide. Okay? So, before I end my session, let me ask our participant participants a question. Wag kayong magalala, isang tanong lang naman to, hindi to mahaba. Okay, isang tanong lang. Gusto ko lang magkaroon ng interaction sa YouTube channel natin or sa ating Zoom, yung mga nandito po. Which of the following is known as the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013? Ayan. So, hindi ko na babasahin yung mga choices. I would like you to select na lang and answer. Um... Ma'am Rona, may nagsasagot ba? Mukhang wala nagsasagot. But anyways, uh, so ano po ang sagot natin? Okay? In 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The answer is... Ayun, baka hindi ko lang nakikita. But the answer is letter... Okay. Letter D. Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013. So education is not a privilege. It is a right. Um, ipamahagi natin ang balitang ito, lalo-lalo na sa ating mga kabataan. It is fun to be with you guys. Maraming salamat sa mga tumutok. Maraming salamat po sa ating mga classmates dito, kay Ma'am Henley, ayan, for giving us the opportunity to, to have this session. At hindi pa po tapos tayo. Meron pa tayong isang reporter. Um, I would like to say thank you very much for listening. And now, we will now move on to our um, last, I think, our last reporter or discussant for this morning. So she is a uh, master teacher one at Pila Elementary School. Um, she's teaching grade two ngayon, and I'm proud that her way of teaching is... Um, may integration talaga yung technology at nagagamit talaga niya para sa bata. Yung masasabi ko talaga na para sa bata. I can always I can always see what she's doing because she is my loving wife. <laughs> okay, lagi lang ako nasa back door kaya alam ko kung paano siya magturo. Then buhay na buhay uh, yung mga sinasabi ko kanina yung mga characteristics ng teachers ay uh, makikita natin kung paano magturo ang ating next Discuss that. She is also a Google Certified Educator Level 1 uh, kasama po namin dito. And she is our uh, the MC for this morning. Okay? The uh, the intelligent, ayan, the kind-hearted, napakamatulungin. Kahit sinong nanonood ngayon, nakakilala si ma'am, masasabing totoo yung sinasabi ko. But hindi ko na patatagalin. Without further delay, let me... Uh, guys... Uh, let us give her a virtual clap. Welcome, Ma'am Rona P. Peralta. Hello, Sir Daryl. Hello uh, po. Good morning po. Ayan, mas lalo kong kinabahan sa uh, introduction mo. No? So, congratulations sa uh, uh, very comprehensive discussion mo. Okay, so alam ko po na ang bawat isa ay nagre-ready at nagpe-prepare na ng kanilang lunch. Yan. So, alam ko bago matapos yung preparation niya ng lunch, tapos din po ako. Okay po? Okay. So, sa ating uh, viewers sa YouTube, ayan, di sila nauubos. Thank you po sa uh, 31,000 na, na nanonood ngayon, Doc Henry. Ayan po. Okay. And uh, before ako mag-start, Shout out sa aking uh, mga co-teachers sa Pila Elementary School and also sa Pila Senior High School na talagang uh, all out yung support sa amin kahit tanghaling tapat at napakainit po. Ayan, thank you po sa inyo. Okay, so start na po tayo. So my topic is about right of every citizen to choose a profession and I am Ma'am Rona P. Peralta, uh, Master Teacher 1 of Pila Elementary School. So, before ako mag-start, meron lang akong question. Ayan, so, um, how deeply do you appreciate and take advantage of the freedom you have to learn and grow continually? Sige po, tatawag din ako sa aking mga classmate para makapag-share. 
Siyempre dahil natawag na yung prospect ka rin, tawagin ko naman si Sir Juni. Sir Juni! Hello! Hello po! Narinig po ako ma'am? Yes, loud and clear sir. Okay, thank you so much. So, ayan, the question is, how deeply do you appreciate and take advantage of the freedom you have to learn and grow continually? So, I have the freedom to learn, of course. In this time of pandemic, ang daming mga nangyayari sa aking buhay. Uh, learning is fun. I know learning is fun. So, in this time of pandemic, narito pa rin po tayo sa ating, ano, sa ating class. It is because I want to learn. I want to grow. I want to learn something new. And that learning is uh, very... Good, it is because magagamit ng kusya natin every, every now and then. And of course, through the help of our professor, with the help of Ma'am ano, Henley, ay mag-grow tayo, uh, magagamit natin ito in the future, in the near future, especially sa akin, ay baguhan pa lang, bagong classmate nyo lang dito sa, sa doctoral degree. So I'm very grateful and very thankful po sa inyong lahat for the guidance and support, especially in this time of pandemic. Thank you so much po. Oh, thank you so much uh, Sir Juni. Ayan, yes. Uh, kahit bago ka pa lang, Sir, kita naman namin kung kung gaano kagaling at kung kung ano pa yung ma-share mo sa amin. Ayan, thank you, Sir. So I believe a uh, significant part of preserving and strengthening rights is for those who have them to exercise them to the fullest extent possible. Okay. And to be fully human is difficult from just... Uh, different from being alive and uh, surviving. Okay. And next... So, can anyone imagine uh, what communities would be would be like without police officials? So, ano kayong mangyayari ano, kung, kung wala tayong mga police officials na nagbabantay sa atin? Anyone from the group? Okay. Hello po, Ma'am Rona. Yes, hello, Ma'am. Yeah. Siguro I cannot imagine uh, our world without police officials. No, kasi uh, for me it will be a disaster kasi they, they are the one who governs our society. So they are the one who maintains the order, uh, the peace and order in, in, in our community. So without them, siguro maraming barbaric. <laughs> so maraming mas, mas, mas maraming mas aabuso. Kasi ang nature kasi ng tao talaga, uh, pag wala siyang nagko-control, ang tendency natin to go all away. Parang lahat gusto natin. No? Ngayon nga lang na may police officials na may nagbabantay, simpleng patusuot ng mga face mask, hindi pa natin magawa. So kailangan pa talaga ng mga officials para talagang uh, sumunod tayo. No? So yun yun. So yung kahalagahan talaga ng meron tayong police officials to get together with other profession na meron tayo na so yun yun ang kinagaganda ng mundo uh, yung mga napoproduce ng 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 education ng mga tao na napoproduce ng education like us so paano mo may imagine uh, na walang teachers baka walang police so yun lang po thank you yes ma'am uh, thank you po uh, doc lori v tumpak na tumpak naman talaga no tayo nga na na uh, na, na andito na nagpapatupad din ng batas yan so kailangan talaga natin ng mga officials no hindi lang police so lahat ng ng tao na napo-produce ng isang teacher yan kailangan kailangan natin yan okay so next po so freedom on the other hand has uh, consequences. All of our actions have consequences that are substantial and enduring. So most of the time, either because of the consequences are distant from us or because they are combined with the consequences of lots of other people's actions, we do not seem up close in sharp relief. But once in a while, something happens that reminds us that everything we do matters. 
without exemption, it may not matter to us or here or now, but it matters. Okay. So even person, every person has dignity and value. One of the ways that we recognize the fundamental worth of every person is by acknowledging and respecting their human rights. Yes, so talaga naman, di ba, napakahalaga ng human rights. No, Sabi nga, human rights can broadly be defined as a number of basic rights that people from around the world have agreed are essential. So this include the right to life, the right to a fair trial, freedom from torture or other cruel and inhuman treatment, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and the rights to health, education, and an adequate standard of living. So just like the uh, previous discussion made by uh, Sir Daryl. So human rights connect to us to each other through a shared set up of rights and responsibility. That is why we care about freedom. Okay. So freedom dri drives human progress. It encourages respect for the individual and dignity of treatment for all. It empowers individual autonomy and responsibility. And um, it fosters innovation and creativity through the expression of individual choice and freely determined participation in economic, social, and cultural affairs. So freedom is a right. Rights must be taught to be understood. So teachers play a significant role in promoting the right of every individual. So like in elementary students, particularly particularly in uh, Araling Pandipunan, so natatandaan ko uh, part kasi ng lesson sa elementary and I'm sure sa junior high school and senior high school is yung karapatan. No, sa elementary medyo uh, uh, magaan lang eh, karapatan ng isang bata. So dun pa lang na ituturo na natin as teacher, na ituturo na natin yung mga uh, karapatan nila bilang isang bata. So tayo, we are in uh, uh, graduate studies, kumbaga human rights na. no So kumbaga sa musmus na isipan pa lang nila, ibinabahagi na natin kung, kung ano ba yung karapatan ng bawat bata. Yan. And teaching is a profession which is about inspiring and motivating students to, to realize and exceed their potentials. The greatest teachers of all time have devoted their life in inspiring and empowering their students to achieve great things and be, be a good human being. And, totoo naman po, di ba? So as a teacher, yun naman talaga yung isang nagagawa natin. Ang ma-inspire ang ating mga students. Yung kahit uh, nakakapagod, lalo na po di ba sa panahon ngayon, na uh, tayo ay nasa new normal, talagang sabi nga, mas lalong dumami yung trabaho natin. Pero wag natin isipin ano, yung dami ng trabaho. Sabi nga nila, di ba, maswerte tayong mga teacher. Kasi uh, nung nagkaroon ng pandemic, tayo yung number one na mayroong trabaho. No? Pero for, fulfilling naman kapag narinig mo lalo sa estudyante mo na, na ina-idol ka nila. Yan. So para dun sa ating mga uh, nakuha ng education, masarap maging uh, isang guro. Yan, mula na po talaga sa akin. No, lalo na kapag uh, naalala ko yung grade 2 student ko na online class kasi kami, kaya everyday meron kaming conversation, everyday nakakausap ko sila. Sabi niya, uh, tinatanong ko kasi, o oh, sige, ano yung mga gusto niyong mangyari? Oh, ano, ano yung gusto niyong uh, maging paglaki nyo. So, meron akong isang studyante na talagang nga sabi niya, ma'am, ako po, gusto kong maging teacher kagaya mo. Diba? So, ang sarap sa pakiramdam na may lang siya. Kumbaga, meron natutuwa doon sa ginagawa natin. Meron talagang uh, umiidolo doon sa 
sa ginagawa natin. So, disclaimer lang, ano po, unlike before, sabi nga nung, uh, nung unang panahon, sabi nila, huwag kang magpi-teacher kasi walang yumayaman sa teacher. Pero, for me, as of now, nasa diskarte naman yon ng isang uh, teacher kung paano niya maayos yung buhay niya. Ano po, so, ngayon makikita natin, di ba, may teacher na may sasakyan na. May teacher na may magandang bahay na. Ano po, so, kaya naman natin. Kaya yung mga uh, student ngayon na education, huwag kayong matatakot. Fight lang kayo. Ano, uh, hindi man ganun kalaki yung sweldo natin, pero lumalaki naman siya. Depende sa posisyon na meron kayo. No? Kaya, uh, as we go long, aral lang. Huwag mapapagod mag-aral. Huwag mapapagod mag-say ng yes sa ating mga uh, superior. No. Kasi yun yung sikreto natin. Kahit ang daming trabaho, kahit punong-puno tayo ng trabaho, go lang tayo. Ano po? And next. Okay. A sense of freedom, the ability to choose what you work on. as well as how, when, and where you perform your work is a growing priority for talented professionals across sectors and industries and one of the core of elements fulfilling career. So freedom to a profession and human rights. Why are human rights important? So dapat nga talaga, di ba, alam natin yung mga Uh, karapatan natin. Sabi dito, human rights reflect the minimum standards necessary for people to live with dignity. Human rights give people the freedom to choose how they live, how they express themselves, and what kind of government they want to support among many other things. Yan. So, meron tayo karapatan nating bumoto, karapatan nating uh, pumili ng uh, religion na gusto natin, Yan. So, napakaraming karapatan ng uh, bawat isa sa atin. And human rights also guarantee people the means necessary to satisfy their basic needs such as food, housing, and education so they can take full advantage of all opportunities. So, tayo naman po talaga yung magpapatakbo ng buhay natin. Eh. Diba? Sumunod lang tayo sa batas. Alam natin yung mga uh, karapatan natin. Yan, karapatan nating makapag-aral. Lagi kong sinasabi dun sa mga bata ko kasi uh, number one nila dun sa karapatan is karapatang mabigyan ng pangalan, karapatang mabuhay, uh, karapatang makapaglaro, ayan sa bata, karapatang makapag-aral. Yan, lagi kong sinasabi sa kanila na uh, mag-aral kayo kasi maswerte kayo kasi kayo yung pumapaso. Tingnan niyo yung mga ibang bata na uh, wala silang kakayahan. na pag-aralin ng kanilang mga magulang. So siguro yun yung number one na na kumbaga trabaho natin bilang isang guru. Yung ma-inspire talaga natin yung mga bata natin. Lalo na po sa panahon ngayon, ang daming bata na gustong tumigil. Ang daming bata na gustong patigilin ng mga magulang nila kasi nga walang hindi sila kayang suportahan. Ano po, yung mga magulang na nagtatrabaho and then sila pa yung magtuturo sa kanilang mga anak. Kaya uh, lagi kong sinasabi bilang uh, isang teacher sa panahon ngayon, uh, mag, mag-extend pa tayo ng help para sa ating mga estudyante. Kahit uh, minsan mag-chat si parents, kumbaga talagang ating gabi na, so wala tayong magagawa minsan. Although nagbibigay tayo ng rules, kaya lang minsan yun lang yung time nung magulang para kumustahin teacher, ano po bang assignment nila teacher, anong week na po ba sila. So, hindi madali ang maging isang guro, totoo yun. Pero masarap ang maging isang guro. Ano po? And then finally, by guaranteeing life, liberty, equality, and security, human rights protect people against abuse, those who are more uh, powerful. So, To live, you must satisfy your basic needs. Totoo naman. These basic needs are not free by any means. Meaning, you need a job. Kaya nga, uh, yun din, sabi ko lagi, magtapos kayo ng pag-aaral 
para uh, hindi kayo mahirapang makakuha ng trabaho. Kasi yung iba nga, di ba po, uh, tapos na sila ng pag-aaral, nakapag-aaral na ng college, pero uh, wala pa rin trabaho. So, intay-intay lang. Ganon din yung mga, lalo na sa panahon ngayon, yung mga hindi pa nakakakuha ng net kasi palaging postponed. Alam po talagang uh, sobra na yung time and effort na iniintay nila pag review Uh, makapag-file ng exam. Ayan. So, sana habang uh, hindi pa dumarating yung exam, magbasa lang. Uh, makinig ng mga gantong klaseng webinar kasi mas uh, marami silang uh, matututunan. Sabi din, the freedom to choose one's occupation and pursuit of happiness are right stated in the Constitution. Yes, totoo naman, di ba? So, yung makapag-trabaho uh, tayo, Although, minsan talagang mahira, pero kaya naman natin yan. So, there are relevant rights stipulated in the Constitution that link to working and the formulation of careers such as the respect as individuals of happiness prohibition of involuntary servitude. According to Article 18. And Article 23, freedom to choose an occupation. Yan, yung kababanggit ko lang. And then Article 26, the right to receive an equal education and the right to work. So ngayon talagang uh, unlike before sa education, kung ano talaga yung tinapos mo, uh, medyo okay na ngayon talagang kapag elementary ka, sa elementary ka. No? Kapag ikaw ay secondary, talagang sa secondary ka. Hindi ka uh, pwedeng bumaba sa elementary Po. Unlike before, ako kasi ay graduate ng uh, BSIT, no, major in home economics. Yun. So ako ay nasa elementary na uh, secondary na ako. Yun po. Yan. Pero uh, as we go along naman, may enjoy mo na rin uh, yung pagtuturo. Ano po, basta nasa puso sa akin. Okay. Next. Yan. Right to a profession and career. It is considered a right for workers and people who are willing to work to select a desired job according to their motivation and ability pursuing happiness through their working career. So working at a job profession or career is one of the critical pieces for most of our lives. A job provides income that uh, we need to pay for our basic needs such as food, clothing, and a place to live. The amount of one's uh, income also determines what kind of extra things a person can do, what kind of leisure activities to participate in, or what kind of vehicle one can drive. And so, ayun nga, kumbaga, kagaya namin, uh, kumbaga, uh, as a teacher, nangarap din naman talaga kami, magkaroon ng sariling bahay, magkaroon ng Uh, sariling sasakyan. So, in a long run, mag, uh, magsikap ka lang, magtrabaho ka ng nasa puso mo, basta wala kang uh, inaagrapyadong tao. Yan. Uh, matutupad at matutupad. No? So, ngayon, hindi, although wala naman, hindi hindi naman talaga yumayaman ang, ang isang guro no? para doon sa ating mga uh, edok students. No? Uh, iba lang yung pakiramdam na kapag tinawag ka na ma'am and sir, no, pag tinawag ka na uh, teacher ka. Yan. So, eto naman po na-discuss na uh, kanina ni ni Sir Daryl. So, yan. again, if we take a look on the Sustainable Development Goal of 2030, the first goal is to eliminate poverty. No, pero, Paano ba natin ma-eliminate yung poverty? Balik tayo doon sa number four. Pag meron tayong quality education. Po. Yan. So again, number one, uh, no poverty. Sana nga, no, pagdating ng 2013, wala nang mahirap. Yan. So, tingnan natin. Parang, mm-hmm. ano nangyayari natin sa atin ngayon, kung virtual, Before, hindi naman natin inisip na magkakaroon talaga ng virtual class, di ba? Kung baga, parang nasa uh, uh, hope pa lang yun, parang pangarap na, 
parang cellphone. Dati, uh, hindi natin nakikita yung kausap natin sa cellphone. Ngayon, face uh, virtually, nakikita na natin yung kausap natin. And ngayon, through education, virtually din yung nangyayari. So, talagang nangyayari po. Ano, intay lang tayo. Sana, no poverty na in 2030. So, Sustainable Development Goal, ayan, or SDG, one aims to eradicate extreme poverty by 2030. The visualizations and data below present the latest data on our progress. And access to education contributes to poverty reduction because an educated population is able to take informed decisions contributing to the equal rights, economic, and natural resources, and to granting basic services for all men and women, including ownership and control over land and property inheritance, appropriate new technologies, and financial services. So, agaya nga rin ha, uh, uh, nung nabanggit ni, ni Sir Dari, so kung illiterate ka, ang hirap, ang hirap, hindi ka makakaboto, Although ngayon, pinibigyan na rin natin ng, ng karapatan din. No? Uh, naalala ko nung umupo ako sa eleksyon, talagang babasahin mo isa-isa doon sa, sa hindi nakakabasa, hindi nakakasulat, igagayad mo talaga sila. Pero how much more kung nakapag-aral ka, di ba? How much more kung nakapagtapos ka pa ng pag-aral? No? So sana hindi mahirap ngayon yung modular natin, yung online distance learning natin kung ang bawat isa ay uh, nakapag-aral. Si isa talaga sa challenge na yun po yan. O lalo na yun sa modular distance learning. No, paano kung kung si parent ay uh, hindi nakapagtapos ng pag-aaral? So ang hirap ituro kay bata. Ano po? So again, balik po ulit ako dun sa lagi kong sinasabi, as a teacher, ito yung mag-e-extend ng uh, help mo. Ano po sa iyong mga estudyante at lalo tigit sa magulang. Kasi sila yung katuwang natin. Sila yung katulong natin ngayon. Ito. Next. So the 1987 Constitution of Republic of the Philippines, Article uh, 14, Section 5.3 states that every citizen has a right to select a profession or course of study Subject to fair, reasonable, and equitable admission and academic requirements. So, uh, ngayon naman talaga, no, so, may karapatan na talaga ng isang uh, mag-aaral na pumili kung ano yung uh, course na gusto niya. Ano, kung, kung, anong, kung saan siya papaso. Ayan. So, talagang yung, uh, pero meron pa rin tayong tinatawag na uh, academic uh, requirements. And uh, Section 5.4 states that the state shall enhance the right of teachers to professional advancement. So, kagaya po nitong ating ginagawa. Ano? So, ito ay best example of professional advancement. Non-teaching academic and non-academic personnel shall enjoy the protection of the state. And now, building up of a dynamic and democratic democratic society. Teachers have the ability to shape leaders of the future. Totoo naman, in the best way for society to build positive and inspired future generations and therefore design society both on local and global scales. In reality, teachers have the most important job in the world. Those who have an impact on the children of society have the power to change lives. So, uh, isa rin yun sa masarap bilang isang uh, guro. Pag nakita mo yung studyante mo, uh, pag nagkasalubong kayo, ma'am engineer na po ako, ma'am doktor na po ako, ma'am teacher na rin po ako kagaya niyo. So, iba. Ano, iba yung pakiramdam. Alam ko mag-a-agree sa atin yan si Doc Henry, si na ma'am Dory. Ako kasi kahit Uh, bata pa ako sa service, kumbaga nag-start kasi ako sa private school. Yung makita ko yung mga estudyante ko na before sa private school na engineer na ngayon. Ano po, uh, sila ay uh, psychology na ngayon. No, meron nga ako before, ano siya, uh, 
parang nagpa-practice teaching pa lang ako nun sa, sa Santissima. Uh, nag, lumaba na siya sa Binibining Pilipinas. No? Naalala ko, na-train ko pa siya sa TLE noon, yung sa may camp noon eh, about pageant. So, nung nakita ko na sumali siya sa Binibining Pilipinas, ang sarap sa pakiramdam na gano. And then, uh, kapag nakita nila na kasi tayo mga teacher, kailangan resourceful din tayo, itatandaan niya na mga soon-to-be mom and sir. No. Once na kailangan natin ng ganon, talagang nag extend ng help yung mga dati mong estudyante. Ma'am, magdo-donate na po ako nito. Ma'am, ako na po bahala dito. Yung estudyante ko na SK na rin ngayon, SK chairman. So, ang bilis. Uh, Kung baga, talagang uh, tayo yung nag-shape ng future ng ating mga uh, estudyante. So, hindi man ganun talakihan yung sweldo, pero yung makita mo sila na naandon, although uh, hindi naman ako bata pa, yan, 35 years old na ako, pero yung yung nakikita ko yung mga estudyante ko na konti pa sila ha unlike yung mga uh, season teachers natin ipo ba ang sarap sa pakiramdam and according to article 14 section 5 of the 1987 1987 constitution the state is mandated to enhance the right of teachers to professional advance ayan parang na ulit lang ito so, those who are educated can choose their profession. Okay, those who have their profession can enhance their way of life. This eliminates poverty, just like first SGD. The first step of attaining this is to exercise your right. Parang nagulit lang yung slides. So, sabi din dito, every citizen has the right to choose their trade, occupation, or profession freely. The practice of a trade, occupation, or profession may be regulated by law. Ay. So, yan. So, may question pa po ba tayo, mga madam sir? And sa ating uh, nakalighten, sa ating YouTube. Anyone po from the group? Wala po tayong nakikita ng uh, questions ngayon sa YouTube at saka dito sa Zoom. Okay. So, kung wala na po tayong question, uh, bago po ako mag-end, Ma'am Leia, yung ating pong link, pakipost na para sa kanilang certificate. Ayan. So, Thank you for listening. Stop lang ako, sir. Okay. Parang nabura yung aking ano. May nabura sa slide ko. Kaya na, nawala ako. Meron kasi akong end pa. Check ko ha. Ayan. So to sum up, ayun. Yun ang nawala. Siguro hindi ko na-save kagabi. No, talagang humabol pa ako. Yan. So, to sum up this session, every citizen has the right to choose their trade, occupation, or profession freely. The practice of a trade, occupation, or prof profession may be regulated by law. Okay, so... Kung wala na po tayong questions, sige nga po. Wait lang po natin ang um, ang link na ipopost ni Ma'am Lea sa YouTube and at the same time po sa ating, uh -huh, ating Zoom meeting for your certificate. Ma'am Leo, wala po yung link for, for insert lang po ang nakalagay sa YouTube. Ayan, so habang pinipreprepare po ni Ma'am Leia, ayan, so muli po, thank you po sa aming uh, professor, Doc Henry, and of course, sa ating dean, uh, 
Dean Pamatmat, thank you po for uh, this opportunity na makapag-share po kami ng apat. Sir Daryl, pa-help si Ma'am Lea para sa link. Thank you. Ma'am Lea? Hello po, Doc Henry. Hello po, sir. Okay na po yung form? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Ma'am Leia, sa YouTube, wala pa siya. So again, thank you po sa student ng LSPU, Santa Cruz Campus, and to all the teachers of SD Olaguna, especially sa Pila Senior High School, uh, Pila Elementary School, yan, kay, kay Ma'am May and Ma'am Claire, kay Ma'am Agnes. Alam ko na busy na rin sila pagpe-prepare ng kanilang lunch. Thank you po. Ayan, sa Team Sagana. Ayan, okay. So, naandyan po ang certificate po. So, paklik lang po ang link sa ating chat box. And ipo-forward na rin po ni Sir Mark later. Okay, so bago po tayo mag-closing uh, remarks, Doc Henry. Ah, okay. Nagkakaroon ng technical problem si, si Doc Henry. Okay, ma'am. Yan, ma'am. Hinig na po. So, closing remarks na tayo. Thank you very much sa lahat ng mga magagaling nating mga speakers. Very commendable lahat kayo. So, I salute. Thank you very much. Okay, so continue na po ako, Do. Okay. So, again, okay na po tayo sa link. Ayan. Thank you po. So, this has been a day full of wisdom and fact with uh, new knowledge. New knowledges. We hope that our participants learned something today from our uh, uh, intelligent resource speakers. So, at this juncture, let us hear the closing remarks from one of the hard-working principals of SDO Laguna, our fellow in the Department of Education, the principal one of Santo Angel Sur Elementary School, Mrs. Lori B. K. Rivera. Yeah, so thank you, Ma'am Rona, for a warm introduction. So to the brave facilitators of this virtual lecture series, to our YouTube viewers, Edu 601 enrollees, my classmates, and especially to Dean Heidi Pamatmat, a woman of intellect and gracefulness. To our dear professor, Doc Henley, who planted the seed of innovation in us, who inspires us to do something beyond what we have already mastered. A blessed day to all of us. So success comes from taking the first step, that is to accept the challenge. So Barack Obama once said, once we succeed, we succeed because of our individual initiative and because we did things together. So congratulations, Educ 601 Part 2 facilitators for going live to a much wider platform. Nothing is impossible if you have the digital mastery research skills, and the right attitude. It makes our dream work work. So again, congratulations to Team Part 2. You did a great job. Hope that each and every one of us have learned something new today. 
thank you and God bless everyone. Keep safe po tayo palagi. So, that's all. Again, congratulations po. Thank you so much, Ma'am uh, Lori B. Masyado kasi kami na-inspire last week sa inyong presentation. Ayan, kaya uh, talagang todo effort ang uh, kumbaga ay Team 2. Yan. <laughs> Thank you, Ma'am Lori B. for the uh, inspiration. Sabi ko sa inyo, yung mga Ma'am Insuri, talagang uh, ang bawat isa ay uh, hinuhugutan talaga. Ano po na uh, inspiration. Okay, so... Ngayon naman po for the uh, closing prayer. Yan, ito talagang hinahanga ang korinto ng taong po sa sobrang tapang, dedicated niya uh, sa kanyang trabaho. Yan, kaya nga uh, sabi niya, isa daw siya, sabi ng kanyang teacher or ng kanyang uh, colleague, isa siya sa best principal. So, totoo naman po. So, for the uh, closing prayer, Uh, tinatawagan ko po ang Principal 2 ng Nicholas Galvez Memorial Integrated National uh, High School, Ma Mercedita P. Pabico. Hey, yeah. Thank you so much po to the Team 2 of the Philosophical Foundation of Education okay, for the school year 2020-2021. Thank you and congratulations. So in everything, let, let's give thanks to our Lord. So may I request everyone to bow down and uh, let us have the presence of our Lord and saying, Almighty Father, thank you for being with us today. With your presence among us, we know that what was transpired in this webinar is something meaningful and significant. As we conclude in today's activity, may we live to what was we learned and help us to become a better person and a better servant, a lowly servant of yours in our own field. Lord, guide us on our way, protect our family, and uh, may we really give you okay, the, the, the services that you deserve because we are your, we are your followers, we are your servants here. Lord, Glory be to you with all the accomplishments we have for this day. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen po. In the name of the Father, Amen. the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you po. Okay, thank you po, uh, Doc Mercy and Doc uh, Lori B. Again, thank you po ulit sa aming viewers sa YouTube na hindi talaga sila naubos, Doc Henry, kahit uh, lunch break na. Again, Ayan, so sa aking mga kasamahan na hanggang ngayon nakatutok pa rin, Ma'am Evelyn, Ma'am Mars, Ma'am Dalia, ayan, thank you po sa inyo. Uh, ingat po tayong lahat and uh, God bless everyone. So i-end na natin Sir Daryl ang live.